<laughs> I look ridiculous in the webcam that I'm using. Howdy. Damn right. I heard, him giving you a, I heard him giving you a hard time because you were like dressed in sweats. Listen, it was real cold today. I'm hiding my power level. All right. <laughs> Man, now it's we're okay. I'm practically naked right now. So that was awesome. So I'm just getting your camera centered up, Bosch. And then I know we're live on your end. So gotcha. Yeah. No N words. All right. Do you agree? You're not going to say Nazi this whole stream? Like, I would love it. <laughs> hey, I would listen. Love it. I would let's get that in writing, Bosh. <laughs> I am so excited. I cannot wait to be sharing a web uh, uh, a podcast space with people who share my hatred for Nazis. All right. There you go. go. Exactly. I'm delighted and excited. I'm so glad that you dressed up, man. You look fantastic. Thanks. I got yeah. a new camera. Got to test it out. Uh, uh, honestly, Adam, he's put us to shame, man. I came on my like, Adam. No, and he's not me, nice. man. Mine's. I have a. Uh, I have velvet here. So. <laughs> I don't. I didn't wear a tie. Damn it. You. You got time. Run and grab one. No, Carl, no, come on. I'll, I'll, I'll look like a slob. It's fine. Be you the change you want Yang. to see in the world, Carl. You got to run and get that tie. You'll have to. Strip I think off. just a shirt and jacket's enough. <laughs> gotcha. How's it going, boss? You right. Yeah, I'm feeling pretty great today, actually, except it's fucking freezing up here, at least by my privileged oh, L.A. standards. Yeah, that's another thing I heard you complaining about, Vosh. I was like, oh, the weather in L.A. is beautiful today. Oh, well, shame I'm not in L.A. I'm uh, a few uh, 1,200 miles north of there. It's beautiful down there today. Whereabouts are you? I'm in, I'm in uh, uh, Washington. Ah, right, okay. Well, oh, it's, yeah, it's, it's like three degrees in England at the moment, <laughs> so I feel the pain. Gotcha. Hold on. All right. I'm adding the video source. Mm -hmm. All right. We're all good to go on my end. I just hit start streaming. How are you doing, Sitch? Stream status, bad. So, you know, normal. Yeah, normal. <laughs> everything. Computer about to blow up. Stream <laughs> status, bad. Oh I know. It's God. just everything's... Today's the day. So just before we get started, you guys... We're just here as moderators. We want to be un unbiased moderators. We pitch this as capitalism versus socialism, obviously, because it came out of my debate with you, Vosh. But uh, do you guys want to talk about other topics? Do you want us to interrupt if you get off topic? What do you guys want us to do? My, my ultimate thing is I just don't want to see one of you guys talking 90% of the time and the other one talking. I, I'm sure that we're both... Um suitably belligerent assholes that <laughs> okay perfect yeah i, so I think i think we'll both be able to hold ourselves composure wise yeah. i'm perfectly fine with a free-flowing discussion okay same good. Here. Same then here. i'll cool. go i shall go get my beer i'll just kick back <laughs> you guys won't need me at all great yeah no please take the take the day off relax um enjoy the metrics <laughs> i'm sure we'll be able to carry ourselves i'm sure we will let me know when you're live we're live now! Hey now! It's your boy PSA Sitch here with a very special Saturday debate stream, Sargon of Akkad versus Vosh. And of course, as always, we're joined by everyone's favorite, Adam Friended. But before we get into that, two very important things. Five minutes before the stream, I just got a warning sign that my computer may explode. So if I suddenly <laughs> disappear in the debate, you'll know why. And the second thing, the very second, very important thing, as I was told, Vash, that you thought that I was someone completely different. You thought I was <laughs> literature devil. All right, listen up, okay? There are a lot <laughs> of people. How dare you? There are a lot of people online with edgy, uh, with edgy icons that talk about oh. media. I'm really sorry, okay? I promise it I won't happen again. You're saying that all people of shadow look the same, okay? I oh no, Vash! Oh, no, no, no! <laughs> wow, it's anyway. a form of misgendering as well, like. Totally. I will. I vow from this point forward to respect the identities of everyone here on this podcast, <laughs> and I expect to be treated the same. How do you so identify? How mic, can we make sure your we mic is a little low? If you want to edge it up, do you mind? Which ones? Did you say me? Sorry, Sargon. Yeah, your mic is a little uh, low. Your mic I is a little high. Can't, but... It's actually at the highest, the highest volume I can get at. I'll try okay, and talk a bit closer good. into it. There you, there you go. Uh, yeah. Sorry. Anyway, are there any rules to this debate, Adam? Is this going to be free-flowing free anarchy? What's happening? 
free Love falling anarchy. anarchy is exactly the direction that we're going to go. Do you, do, do you guys have a preference who starts? Do you, are you going to make an argument? I mean, we pitched this debate as capitalism versus socialism. So I, I imagine that subject is going to come up at some point. Um, <laughs> okay. Would you, Sargon, if you don't mind, uh, do you mind if I open? No, no, you please. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I can't tell you. It's actually really surreal to be speaking to you. You've been kind of a, a, a boogeyman for the left online for as long as I've been even politically interested. So the uh, 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 I remember a little while ago when you um, you commented on the discussion that I had had with Adam Friended, and I, I chided you a little bit for YouTube comments because it's YouTube comments. People make fun of that. I join in, obviously. But really, no, I, I was quite flattered at the validation that you're a... Uh, um, that your involvement afforded me. So I have, I guess, a single question. Um, I have no idea what you believe in. I have no idea what driving political philosophy you ascribe to or what leads you to making the decisions you do. When I look at it from a distance, it almost feels incoherent. So I was actually rather hoping we could sort of codify what it is you actually believe so I know what positions I should be attacking. Sure, I'm an English liberal, so I believe in constitutional values, free markets, personal freedoms, innate human rights, things like that. Right. Um, open borders, uh, free economic trade. Um, no. So not a classical liberal. Well, no, though. no, uh, not, an op not open borders at the very least. Or at the very least, lax immigration to allow um, markets, people and labor to flow freely across borders to maximize economic output. Well, it depends what you're trying to achieve, doesn't it? Um, yeah, I suppose. You Lately, you've been going on a bit about those um, Muslim rape gangs. I was wondering why. Uh, I'm opposed to Muslim rape gangs. Okay, that's fair and reasonable. Um, do you <laughs> have a you. problem broadly with the non-rapey Muslim uh, 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 refugees and asylum seekers that have entered the UK? There haven't really been any. There have been no non-rapey Muslim asylum seekers and refugees that have entered the uk there haven't really been any refugees or asylum seekers that's what the calais jungle is about the uh, conservative government wouldn't let them in they said they let something like i don't know two thousand in but that's a very small number all right the last time i checked the number of um, refugees and asylum seekers that are currently in your country was to the mm. tune of one hundred and eighty thousand. um really? obviously not where all of those from the it? syrian refugee crisis but all right, where, where did you get that information from yeah so Let's see. Guys, um, mm -hmm. we got a lot of dead air here. Are we talking capitalism and socialism? No, or? no. So I in mean, March 2019, yeah. um, over the past year, so from a 2018 to 2019 period, it seems that there were... 40,000 applicants for asylum seeking in the United uh, Kingdom. I can find the uh, stats yeah. that I was looking for specifically beforehand. But while we're yeah, waiting on those, those are. where are the Muslim where are the Muslim rape gangs then? The Muslim rape gangs are from legal immigration. Wait, asylum seeking and refugees are legal? Yeah, but you're mistaking refugees and asylum seekers for just regular immigrants. No, I, I said asylum seekers and refugees who are both came through legal processes. Yes, we took very, very few of them, but we take millions of legal immigrants who are just immigrating to the country. They're not refugees or asylum seekers. Okay, so your issue here isn't with refugees or asylum seekers, then. It's with immigration in general. What issue do I have? I, I'm asking you that. You said there were Muslim rape gangs. Well, you, you, you've assumed that I have an issue. Then what, what is it? You said you had an issue with them when I asked you if you did. I'm asking well, yeah, you that's, why. That's not anything that I think anyone of any reasonable moral fiber would would object to. Is okay, well then let's clarify. Everyone has an issue with rape gangs, don't they? Um, yeah, absolutely. The issue is, what do we do with that problem? When I think we have an issue with rape gangs, for example, I try to examine the socioeconomic causes that sort of underpin whatever it is that's leading to those attacks. There are obviously okay. a lot of such that lead to the um, problems that Europe has been having in general. Um, what, but what I think that... Not, it, hang mm -hmm. on, hang on. Before we, before we gallivant on, mm -hmm. um, what do you think the causes are? Uh, for the immigration um, that for, you're dealing for with there? Muslim rape gangs. 
Are we talking about legal immigrants or asylum seekers yes. and refugees? We're talking about legal immigrants. Okay. Um, well, I think a predominant issue would be that the majority of the legal immigrants that you're seeing from the countries that have Muslim majority populations are, are young. There are a lot of young men coming in. Young men have a, a disproportionate rate of, um, of of crimes committed, no matter what demographics you're looking at. In fact, I think for the UK, uh, 9% of the population, which is young men between the ages of 18 and 34, committed about 50% of the violent crimes. Um, over the past 10 year period. So whether or not they're Muslim, having people who come in who are disproportionately young is invariably going to lead to a disproportional rate of crime being committed by that population. Well, we have the same issue here I, in America with on, Mexicans. On, okay. Yep. I, I mean, I agree with you on that point. That is true. Mm -hmm. But the problem with the grooming gangs is there's a particular set of characteristics that, that identify them and separate them from other forms of crime. And when, when looking for these particular gangs with these particular characteristics, um, it seems that it's um, essentially based in identity. How so? Well, the victims are exclusively non-Muslim, and the perpetrators seem to be almost exclusively Muslim. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um, I see that when I look at crime statistics in the UK, there's undeniably been a bump over the past... Um, over the past few years, but it seems as though that bump is much, much smaller than the proportional decline the country has seen since the mid-90s. It seems as though the crime bump that we've been seeing isn't entirely out of the ordinary with the regular cycles of crime raising and lowering in proportion with the population changes. I can bring up a graph on that if you'd well, like. Hang on, hang on, hang on. So, so what? Well, it means that this isn't the end of the UK. There are a lot of people who are acting as though this is the when decline. When did I say that we're looking at the end of the UK? I never did. However, you have when engaged you in some pretty reactionary language when well, it comes on, to... Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. You asked me a question. You, no, no, hang on, hang on. You said this isn't the end of the UK, as if I had said that it is. But that was a way of me following through on explaining that the issue yeah, you're you also, dealing hang with on, hang on, hang is on. well also, in line... Yeah. With you the issues the UK has been dealing with. One at a time, guys. Because you don't understand what I believe. I never ascribe that position to you. If you'd like, you I can did. rephrase you my claim. Did. I did yeah, not. Please. Okay. So. You absolutely did. I apologize if you feel that way and will work harder to respect your considerations in the future. Good. So. In regards to the increase in violent crime in the UK, while it has increased, there is no denying that. And I don't deny the fact that immigration does often bring problems. That would be a ridiculous claim to go against. The fact that it is in line with, and in fact, significantly below previous spikes in crime that the UK has weathered, suggests to me that while this is an issue that should be taken seriously, nobody should deny that, um, there are certain reactionary tendencies that I think might be an overstep to that problem. For example, uh, cutting before down we, on before, immigration. Sorry, sorry, before we before we go on, mm -hmm. uh, what are you what are you proposing exactly? I'm, and what do you think I'm proposing? Well, you ran with UKIP, so you've already run with pretty far right groups who are interested in curtailing Islamic you, immigration. UKIP are not far right. I apologize. You're right. They're well, quite, quite the UKIP centrist. was literally left by Nigel Farage around the time you came in because they were moving too far right. So that's no, not my you, characterization, you, you, that's no, his. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Yeah, but you, you've got to understand the nature of the, t the meaning that's in, within the terms that are being used here. Um, that far right is effectively a dog whistle to say not politically correct. A dog for whistle. Example, the, yes, for example, the I'm not politically whistle. correct. Do you think I'm far right? No, I don't, but that's not my characterization. But uh, like, for example, the Turks are far right at this point. The Posey Parkers and people like that. People who don't agree with trans transgender ideology are considered far right. It really depends so, on like the I way said, in which they engage in those things. But now you're ascribing to me positions I don't no, hold. Listen, when I say listen, when no, I say no, UKIP is far right, I'm saying Walsh. it because Nigel Farage. A, well, Walsh. you're mischaracterizing no, my position. No. I, I'm not ascribing a position to you. Mm -hmm. I'm letting you know that because you're not from this country, you don't understand the sort of tenor of the dialogue that is. Is Nigel Farage here. from your country? Yes, but Nigel Farage. Nigel is, Farage uh, left UKIP after I, Tommy Robinson was I, appointed. Can I what I'm saying? Please? Because it was a far right party, too far well, right for can him. Can I finish what I'm saying? You're I'll free to. The, I'm not, because you keep interrupting me. My apologies. Nigel Farage is not far right either. Far right is a dog whistle term to say not not acceptable within politically correct politics. That puts a lot of people in this regard. And when people want to 
avoid the beating stick that the media use against these people. They say, oh no, I'm not with them, they're far right. This is this is what Nigel Farage is Sort of like how anti-racist is a code word for anti-right? Sorry, it's a code word for what? Anti-white. Do you believe that characterization, that anti-racist is a code word for anti-right? Anti-racist is code for anti-white? I think they usually, don't they usually say diversity is usually a code word for anti-white? They say both. And by they, I mean neo-Nazis. Right. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Right. So you're essentially making the same argument that you can't claim anything is far right because far white is used to describe anyone who well, isn't no, on the I, left. I, it depends what you think is far right. What does far right mean in your definition? Whether or not something is far right obviously depends on the political predilections of the person who is using that term. When I used it, I was referring to the description of Nigel Farage, a popular politician who lives in your country and is familiar with the language you use, who described UKIP as too far right for him after Tommy Robinson was appointed, a man you defended after his arrest around the same time you came in as one of their MPs. So when I say UKIP is a far right party, I am in fact quoting one of its founders and a prominent politician in Brit Bongerland itself. If you so disagree Richard with that Spencer characterization, that's fine. Richard Spencer is a progressive then, because he claims to be a progressive. That's an excellent... I would love to get into that. Do you know what the word progressive means? Well, I don't before, care. Richard well, Spencer claims second. he's a progressive. Um, By your logic, continue, then uh, he is a progressive, and Nigel Farage is right that UKIP's far right. Did anything about my logic just say that words have no meanings and anyone can describe themselves to mean anything yes. without any consideration? Yes. So because That's you disagree exactly with Nigel Farage's saying. characterization of the party yeah, that he about, helped create. How about we don't worry about Nigel Farage's characterization. Why don't you just define far right? It's just, it's strange to me that you would impugn the legitimacy of far right as a criticism when it was levied against the party by the person who created it. And you then come well, to tell me mean? that far right is a way to describe people who aren't politically correct. Tommy Robinson isn't politically yeah. correct. Neither is Nigel Farage. But so obviously right when he mean? used that characterization, he wasn't using it from the perspective of somebody that you have mischaracterized here. Why can't you just define far right for me? Well, it depends on where you are in the political spectrum. I would consider I would term, consider wanting to end it's different to everyone. Yeah, yes. So we have then to define why our use terms. It? That's why what use I'm asking well, you to the do. same is define the same can be it. said with progressive or English liberal <laughs> or classical liberal. Think of all of the ways I, in which you've can, bastardized the term classical this. liberal over the past few years. I'm not interested in debating that with you. I'm interested in finding out from you what your definition of far right is. And I can't continue until you define it, because as you say, it's subjective. In the so instance of definition? UKIP specifically, considering that their um, push for Brexit was prompted largely on um, populist xenophobic rhetoric, I'm, I'm sure you would disagree with that. I know you would disagree would, with that characterization, but here's the quick question from you, okay? Yeah. What is fear-mongering? I, I just want you to define far right for me. I, I'm not, I'm not I, answering the question until you define far right for me. Far right is a yeah. political characterization for anyone outside of the Overton window to the extent that they would be considered far. Do you want a more specific term? No, that's perfect. I was quoting that, that proves my point precisely. That it's, it's subjective. A term. The point yeah, that, that I agreed with, whistle. all language is subjective. We create it for the utility we derive from it. I was quoting the founder of UKIP when I described it as a far right party. If you yeah, have a problem know, with his language usage. Your definition of far right there makes hey, it. Hey, Vosh, can you as, lower as your when... microphone a little bit, just a tad? Sure. Sorry. I can push you it further away from me. Okay, your your go. definition of far right there means absolutely nothing, though. Simply outside of the over. That's window. why I was quoting nothing the about founder the of UKIP. Why are you so angry over this? Vosh, what you're saying is that the term far right means outside of the. I was window, quoting. Right? You have yeah, to wait. Let me, I need to help. That's I need to help you with this. I'm, I'm willing right. to help you with this one. Vos, can you let me? When speak I'm describing, well, Vos, really quickly, because I feel as though time, we're guys. confused right now, and I'm trying to help us. I both. agree that you are confused right now. Can I agree that we're both confused. Right. Okay, I'm confused as to why you're continuing on this point. So let me clarify because really I'm, quickly. I'm trying to explain. To you I the would not use far right as an objective term to describe a party. What I, I was agree. doing was quoting Nigel Farage because okay. you then criticized me for using far right in a way which is not yeah. in line with how Brit mongers use it, far right. 
And you I turn that on you by I pointing out I am quoting for, uh, for not thing. only a Brit bonger, but the person who founded the party. If you want well, me to use care. more specific language, I don't care if you don't care. You're acting what? as though I'm the one who used this language when I'm quoting the person who I felt you, you couldn't impugn for their language, language right usage. Right now. Vosh, give right. Sargon a chance to respond. Are we going you to argue about the definition of far right for the next How, 40 minutes? Vosh, Vosh, Hopefully Vosh. not. Hopefully not. Hey, the model <laughs> gives Sargon you to be quiet for a moment. Can you Can you do that? Do you, are you going to ask me what far right means? No, I'm going to explain to you why your defini far, definition of far right respond, makes exactly what you're saying about the term far right redundant. Hit me up. You just defined it as being outside of the Overton window. That's exactly correct, but that's not actually an analysis of someone's political positions. No shit. I agreed with that. That's why I was quoting... Your own position that's why I was quoting... Another person. Do you it, want me to rephrase matter. my arguments if, in my own language? That's an appeal to authority, Vosh. That's an, that's an appeal to authority. to authority to describe UKIP by the person who founded UKIP and left the party because of the influence yes. of people like you? Yes. Do you know appeal to authority yes, is you only... Are wait, just wait, appealing to I can, Nigel Farage You can learn authority. from this. You can learn something. An appeal you to authority... You are not justifying anything. An appeal to authority reasoning. is only fallacious when the authority doesn't have authority on the subject. Nigel Farage it's has authority. Bush, it's always fallacious. Do you want to look up the definition <laughs> of the it's, it's, appeal it's to authority fallacy? Bush. But you, wait, wait, wait. You really can, quickly, really quickly. Can, do you think you it's cannot. a fallacy? Do you think it is a fallacy to appeal to the authority of a physicist when speaking on the legitimacy of issues concerning physics? What you're doing. That's a yes or no question, is, Sargon. What you're doing. That's a yes or no question, think, Sargon. It, I, I don't have to talk, but if you're asking me a question, I think that's a yes or no question, you, Sargon. Do you think that it is a fallacy an answer? to appeal to the if, validity of a physicist's uh, authority? Moderators, can we can we can we get some yeah, moderation? Yeah, yeah, Vosh. It's a yes or no question that Vosh, I think is pretty pertinent. Can you guys not mute him after he's asked the question? Well, I, I so can, I can but I, I don't like to mute people. But I will, Vosh. I'm going to mm -hmm. mute you if you don't just respond to me. But go ahead, Sargon. Uh, I just right. I got to so, give Sargon a chance to respond, Vosh. You keep interrupting him when he let let him. That let, let it's him very stop ungentlemanly, Vosh. <laughs> yeah, let him you stop can, talking. You can make your you point and then pause and then make your point after I've spoken. Yeah, there so you go. So the, the point of the term far right is it is just a dog whistle to say this is a bad person. As you've said by your definition of far right, there is no real definition of far right. It's not a political position. It isn't a political ideology. You're not defining anything in a positive way. What you're saying is this is just the bad area. And anything we relegate to the bad area is bad. And when you use Nigel Farage using that tactic, what he is trying to do is ingratiate himself with the media. Now, I know you're not British, so I appreciate that you might not have known this or understood this, but that's what he's doing. Because, for instance, Nigel Farage has said practically everything that I've said about these subjects as well. So if he calls something like me not far right, then essentially he's calling himself far right as well. So all this is is kind of weak political gamesmanship. And I don't, I, honestly, I thought we'd below you. To be honest. So I don't I know if you, I don't know if you missed my question. Do you think it is fallacious to appeal to the authority of a physics professor when asking a question about physics or trying to clarify an answer on it? So, so yeah, let him doesn't answer, prove Robert. the answer if you appeal to an authority. It doesn't prove the answer. Is it fallacious to invoke their authority on the subject? That's a yes or no yes, question. Yes, because you're not proving the answer to the question. So yeah, you probably. believe that it is fallacious in any point to ever address not, the validity or the authority I'm of an expert saying, on the subject? Bush, I'm not saying that when you have two laymen discussing physics and they don't know what they're talking about and you know, physicist X says this, then that's not a useful input into the conversation, but it is, an, it is a fallacious argument. It's not a it's fallacious not, argument. It's, it's you actually don't know the definition the of the fallacy. Let him, let him finish. You keep interrupting. It's he talked, mate, of the Adam, he talked for like 90 seconds, and I'm asking yes, no questions. This is pretty simple. No, exactly. You can well, Google the definition hey, of the know, appeal to authority fallacy if you're interested. <laughs> okay. For anyone curious, the appeal to authority is only fallacious if their authority isn't relevant. So if I'm appealing to Brad Pitt's opinion on climate change, that would be a fallacious appeal to authority because Brad Pitt, though he does have cultural and social authority, does not know anything about climate change, or at least not any Bosch, more than you would expect from Bosch, a layman. Bosh, can but authorities ever be wrong? That is irrelevant to whether or not okay. the line of appeal is fallacious. <laughs> okay, so never mind. That, that is not what... I, wait, do you think it's a fallacy not. means any type of argument that is capable of being wrong? No. Okay, so whether or not it's capable wanna, of being wrong has nothing to do with whether or not it's a fallacy. 
No, but it is a fallacy to appeal to authority in the face of an actual answer. It's not in the face of an actual answer. You often have to appeal to expertise in order to solve questions. You realize that, right? It's a minor point. Let's move on. Well, it's actually incredible to me that somebody could be politically relevant for online this long and not know the basic definition of a fallacy that you could Google and learn. I think I've seen infographs meant to be digested by eighth graders that have a a more nuanced understanding of this topic than he does. But that's okay. We We can move on. What I'm more interested in, because I don't know why like you're posturing so hard on the definition of far right is, while we're speaking on the definition of hang words. On, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, mm-hmm. right, mm-hmm. hang on, right. Hang on, right. You seem very worked up at the moment. Really? And I'm not I'm not here to fight. I understand that your career hang, has hang literally on, on, been on, built on, on you hang. smugly being wrong and remaining hang calm on, because you make a lot of on. money from it. Would hang you like on, to move on, to the I'm, next subject or would you like to posture? I'm not worried about the amount of money I make. What I'm saying is that I'm not here to destroy you, right? I'm not here to like, you know, take you down or anything. Because yeah. you have nothing I want. You have we have like a small not even point. gotten to a single discussion point yet. Because you got okay. triggered but by course. your par- former okay. party leader's characterization of your own party. Yeah. Well, well, okay. you're, I, you're I agree that, that we'll doing... characterize that as triggering. But uh, the point is, Vosh, you laid out the definition of far right, and it actually doesn't mean anything, does it? No, it has a subjective meaning, like all terms. That doesn't mean it means nothing. Yes. But from your definition, what you're saying is far right is just outside of the Overton window, isn't it? Right, which means it is subjective, not meaningless. Those two words mean different but, things. Okay, but what do we what do we derive from that if not just an expression of power? What? I don't know. I, I would like you to clarify that clearly. statement. Okay, so the use of the term far right to categorize something as far right is to categorize it as outside of the Overton window. Agreed. Uh, far enough outside of the Overton window that it would be considered far right. Yes. Yeah, sure. But you're, okay. you're categorizing it. Yes, it's subjective because it relates Overton to window. the subjective and, position of the Overton window. Yes. And the Overton window is that space in which we have ex- the, the acceptable space for political dialogue. Is that correct? That is what the Overton window means. Yes. Yes. So it's just an expression of power. It's not saying something is right or wrong. It's saying this is what we will talk about, and that is what we won't. I talk never about. said it was a value statement. I said it was a descriptor that I was using specifically because I was quoting somebody who I felt had authority on the characterization of UKIP. This is ridiculous. Only, we haven't it, gotten yeah, to a single only, point yet, and we're twenty five minutes makes, in. Yeah, yeah, let's let's. It let's only move makes on. sense if you care about the Overton window. Is what I'm saying. The Overton and window exists care. whether you like it or not. It has been shifting for hundreds of years. It is a valid tool of discourse in political science. I don't know why you're acting as okay. though this is something you need to care about for it to exist. Well, you seem to you seem to be interested. I mean, you brought up the term far right. I would have just I I actually can't ideology. I'm really sorry that the language use that I engaged in was very upsetting for you. I was using it specifically to quote again Nigel Farage, and I was going to follow it with specific policy pointers that I was going to yeah. use to describe well, let's, why let's I go felt for those policy pointers. Let's we have spent point. the past 15 to 20 minutes arguing over whether or not far right is a valid characterization of UKIP, yes. and then you demonstrated to me you don't understand what fallacies mean, I'm okay with talking about I something I find a little bit more interesting. Mean, you, you seem How about whether or not Richard Spencer is a progressive? A because earlier... Um, well, let's, yes. let's get to the policy Well, there's a difference UKIP. between a fallacious appeal up. to authority and an appeal to authority. <laughs> okay. Yes, right. we can look it up I'll if you'd like. If you can give me three the... minutes... I don't see why we don't want to do You don't. You don't want to look it up. You don't want to look it up. We'll look it up after the stream. Let's move on to what were those policy prescriptions you wanted to bring up, Bosch? I'm actually well, and I'm particularly curious now because this was brought up without my involvement. Richard Spencer being a progressive, you claim that I have suggested policy positions that you were about to bring up. Well, I'm not interested in talking about UKIP policy positions if you're going to. I did bring yeah. that up, and then you brought up Richard Spencer. Are you interested in that? Because that is your most well, recent, really? the spice, you're not. Then why'd you bring it up? That's very strange, well, Carl. Why would you do Bosch, that? Because your, you Bosch, are bringing push, it up. Push your you mic you back mentioned that someone said, if if Nigel Farage say you keep a far right, then they are far right. In the same way that if Richard Spencer says he's a progressive, he is no, a progressive. No, that a was fantasy. not my argument. When you <laughs> no, quote someone, you are not saying. So let me help you out here. 
when you quote somebody, that does not implicitly mean you believe that by quoting somebody, their word is not only true, but divinely correct in all instances. So when I said UKIP characterized by, as far right by Nigel Farage, I am not then stepping in to say that I believe Nigel Farage is an empirical, objective, divine arbiter on all things political. And you have somehow turned yeah, that that's into a ridiculous standard. No one thinks that about anyone. But you are saying that Richard Spencer, uh, that Richard Spencer that Nigel Farage is a legitimate authority on whether UKIP is far right or not. I think that the founder of the party, or one of them, is a reasonable person to cite a subjective characterization of the party on. Yes, but that's because there because are no you don't objective the political circumstance in which he said it. He's actually being a slimy weasel when he says. I'm that. familiar with it. I'm well aware of the optics You're games not. that goes with distancing from the UKIP party. I was familiar with it. Then you think people weren't following the stuff that went like on? He over wasn't there? doing that. I never said he wasn't. I, you well, I can't. Like we this. we're going to go over this okay, forever. Let's, let's this is extraordinary. On to the next subject. Let's move on to the next subject. Yeah. You so why do you believe Richard Spencer is a uh, progressive? Oh, because he said he was. That's it. Yeah. Oh, okay. And because it winds up the lefties. It's amazing. It's my favorite meme. I know. That's pretty much all of your political impetus. Yeah. It's what winds up the Wait, lefties. That's why, why you, you supported communist? Trump as well. I'm, I'm interested in this. Why are you a communist? I am describe myself more as a libertarian socialist these days. We said we were all going to respect each it? other's identities. Well, I didn't know. I thought I thought I thought you were actually more of a Stalinist. I wasn't sure. I have, okay. Wait, so, wait, wait. You're you're actually talking to the wrong person. I've spent dozens of hours critiquing uh, tankies and everyone else who defends oh, okay. Stalin, uh, the People's cool. Republic of China. Cool. Okay. So, what would what would the um what would be the critique of capitalism be uh, from the libertarian socialist position? What's well, the problem with capitalism? That's the thing. I love freedom. Do you like freedom? Depends what you mean by freedom. Oh, interesting. Do you like democracy? Too soon to tell. Interesting. Okay, so you're not a liberal of any kind then. Those are basic yeah, tenets of liberal am. philosophy. Okay, well, no, they, they, because I respect... They, 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 are, mm -hmm. they are modern modern positions that liberals hold. No, the Enlightenment they literally they, codified Raj, the philosophical... You're saying your, your volume is crazy loud by comparison. I am pulling uh, that microphone away yeah. from my mouth, but here, well, I'll try to... Do me a favor and take that microphone in your other room and close the door. <laughs> There we go. Li li liberalism yeah. e evolved before democracy, Bosch. Thank liberalism you, evolved before democracy, and then democracy yeah. was created by those involved in the foundation of liberalism. It was a, well, a no, response but, but, to the idea of the divine right of kings. Enlightenment thinkers yeah, were the well. ones to postulate that a neoclassical approach to society, one which valued things such as democracy, freedom, and fair trade, was a more ethical way to arrange human society than the monarchies that were previously prominent. It was the I founders suppose, of the Enlightenment who I proposed this. I suppose to, um, to, to answer your question more accurately, uh, when, when you say democracy, I, I interpreted that as universal suffrage, but uh, you don't mean that, do you? Um, Democracy can mean a lot of things. What value, for example, is democracy if the landlords control the land on which you work, the nobles? I don't know. What? You tell me. Well, it's not particularly meaningful because in practical terms, your ability to act democratically is influenced by how much individual freedom you have. If you don't have the freedom, for example, to leave your plantation because you're expected to work 18 hours a day, you don't functionally live in a democracy. Okay, where, where did that ever happen then? Where did what ever happen? Uh, the peasants not being able to leave the plantation. Um, I assume you meant peasants. I, yes, the peasantry or the serfs. I didn't say it happened. Yeah. It was an example used to prove that economic uh, inconveniences can hamper the de democratic nature of a yeah. society. Well, yeah, I agree that feudal societies weren't democratic. Right. But if you implement political democracy while leaving it such that the peasantry are still utterly beholden to the economic expectations of an upper class, you have functionally not a very democratic society. So okay. that is why Enlightenment in thinkers... Though? Huh? Do we actually live in that society, though? In what society? The society you're just describing. The one in which we have actual democracy? Well, I mean, I'm not going to suggest perfect democracy, but I think the appropriate the approximation that we have of democracy is good enough, is it not? 
It's uh, much better than we had a few hundred years ago, I'll say that. I'm not saying that this is an example of how society functions today. I'm saying it's oh, the right. reason why the Enlightenment thinkers sort of came up with laissez-faire capitalism. The idea was by allowing market trade to happen amongst individuals with limited uh, involvement by the government, you would afford people the economic freedom necessary to have an actual functionally democratic society. I believe we I'm failed. Sure it's actually about democracy because this came before democracy. And the, the, the term laissez-faire came from the chancellor of louis the 14th when he was he understood that a kingdom's glory came from its wealth and so i can't remember the chancellor's name but he was asking them well what exactly can we do to make your lives easier so you can make more money and they just said leave us alone yes there was nothing to do with and the term was laissez-faire monarchy. was best implemented when laissez-faire capitalism was postulated by a variety of um, enlightenment thinkers including adam smith yeah. I believe in many of the values of the Enlightenment. I believe society is better when people can make choices about their own lives, when we have control over the society in which we live. I feel as though capitalism hampers some of those opportunities. Okay, in what way? Well, uh, for example, I believe that our uh, whether or not we live in a democratic society in a political sense is more or less meaningless when most people will spend most of their days in a workplace that is not democratic. Additionally, the forces of the economy. Well, hang, hang on, before we before mm-hmm. we move on there, um, uh-huh. you the 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 contention the most dem- most workplaces are not democratic. Um, why do they need to be? I'm pointing that out. Oh, sorry. You could ask the same thing about society in general. Why does America need to be politically democratic? I think because democracies make people happy. We have no choice. We have no choice with society. The societies we live in are the ones we live in. We can't get away what? from that. We can we change society. Win. Wait, why can't we just have a king if democracy doesn't matter? I didn't say democracy doesn't matter. Well, then I think it matters in every place, including the workplace. Are there no places where democracy is inappropriate? I think democracy is appropriate in places where it makes life better and not appropriate in places where it doesn't. Yeah, but that, that doesn't answer the question. Oh, it does. It means that I'm not categorically in favor of democracy in every social structure. I don't think, for example, a family unit should be democratic. Voting on what you get for dinner seems a little bit weird. But in terms of a workplace, most of us spend most of our lives working in what is functionally an authoritarian system. You can't really, like, democratically question the power of your manager or their manager or the boss. So you're I not think, compelled to be that. Uh, yeah, and you're not compelled to be in America. So why don't we just have a king? You actually are. I mean, if you don't have citizenship any other place, then you are actually compelled to be in America. Well, you can apply for asylum somewhere else. You can apply for economic yeah, asylum. Apply, but yeah. there's, there's, there's no guarantee of this. And I think that what you're doing is setting a ridiculous standard here. I think that in general, a democracy politically is very desirable. But I don't necessarily think that a democracy in every workplace is desirable. Are you saying that a democracy in this country is only valuable because we have no choice but to live in this country? Yeah. So if we could leave, so if we could, so if we were in the EU where you could freely move across borders, you would be fine with Germany instituting a Kaiser. And it doesn't matter whether or not that society is a dictatorial because you could just move to I another think, country. I think you're rather missing my point, right? Well, the, you the just reason, said, wait, wait, really quickly, just to make sure I'm not missing it. Yeah. I said, why don't we have democracy in our workplaces? And you said, well, you can just leave the workplaces. Why do they need to be democratic? I ask you, is it necessary for you to be able to leave a place in order for democracy to be non-viable there. And you essentially said, yes, if you can just leave. So I ask you, in the EU, you can freely travel across the land borders of those countries. Would it be wrong then for Germany to institute a Kaiser if democracy doesn't matter there because you can just leave? That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is the reason the reason that democracy is a useful thing for society is because essentially people are trapped within it. And democracy is a very good way of making sure that power is evenly di- or well distributed through the system. That does not mean that it is the ideal form of governance in all cases. For example, a business is not like a country. A business actually has other demands placed upon it and can actually fail. I mean, I suppose technically countries can fail, but you know what I mean for the sake of argument. Um, there, there is a lot more at work in the management of a business than there is um, in the management of... Uh, of a country? Me, no, let me reframe that. I didn't say that. I would say that there is a lot more risk involved in the management of a business for the individual. So I would suggest that, I mean, for example, I mean, do you honestly think that every, I mean, is it just giant giant corporations that you're aiming for here? Or is it literally every business? Because like 99% of businesses in America are like small businesses. 
So, to clarify, you said democracies only function because we're trapped there. Again, no, you can... No, I didn't say that. I didn't say democracies only function because we're trapped there. Then are they only desirable because you're trapped there? Primarily. I mean, you know, if there was a better way of distributing power around, then you don't have to have a democracy. So you would be fine with... A better way. So you would be okay if Germany or France or any other of those countries where you literally can leave at your behest were made non-democratic, if they were made authoritarian. I don't think you just listened to what I said, or I don't think you're engaging with it. Well, if I'm, I'm Paul, if I'm misunderstanding you, you're saying democracy you functions you're trying, you're or is trying desirable. You're trying to make me say something I'm not saying. Well, then let me democracy ask you yes is, or no. Like, yes or no. Well, hang on. In, Why don't what, I just what, explain well, your confusion? Because I think you're lying to me. You're saying two incontrovertible things. I'm asking you. Lying about my opinion? Yes. You can do that. Why would I do that? Why well, I because you know your position here is stupid. Is democracy really? only on. desirable because it is implemented in places where you have no choice but to be there? I think it's the best solution to the distribution of power within a country that we have discovered so far. Okay. Do you understand that? Whether or not you can leave. Even if you can leave, so what? I agree. Even if you can more? leave. Yes, democracy is wonderful, is, even if you can leave. Is, I don't even know if I call it wonderful, but I think it's definitely preferable to the other alternatives, mm -hmm. don't you? So what does being okay. able to leave have to do with whether or not democracy would be valuable in workplaces? I don't know. You seem to, you seem to be more hung up on this than I am. I don't think that, uh, that for example, a business is, well, let's assume it's a privately owned business. Why should it be democratic? I'm confused here because earlier we went over the same question and I said, why should a country be democratic? Democratic, And then we agreed that democracy is generally good because it brings about a because greater degree you, of autonomy where people, uh, with the institution a person participates in. Yeah, and the then you said, privately owned. but then you said, but people can leave corporations. So then I asked yeah. you, how is that relevant? And now, five minutes later, we have agreed whether or not you can leave a democratic institution has nothing to do with whether or not it should be democratic. I don't, I don't know. I'm not, well, no, I, you know, no, you're right. I'm not saying because you can leave means that it should be democratic. But I don't really think that it's fair to suggest that you can just leave a country if you're not happy with the way it's run. I mean, presumably, but that's... Some countries you case. can. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure. Many countries you can, but that depends on the individual and their personal financial situation. Are you, whether any other are you saying a person's financial situation can prevent them from leaving a country if they don't like what's going on there? Well, there are lots of reasons, but that's certainly one of them. Okay. Well, have I got a word to you about just leaving a business because you don't like how it's managed? Right. Now I'm going to got, tell are you. There are there people in jobs they don't like? Are there? Oh. Quite a few uh, more than you might want to believe. I'm afraid it's a bit of an epidemic. Actually. Yeah. That's mind-blowing, yeah, yeah. So I so like it when people are happy, generally speaking. Really? I like improving society. I'm big on that, okay. conceptually. It seems to me that if we could make an argument that democratizing the workplace would make people happier and maintain the economic output we currently have, because we don't want to fall behind, of course, then that would probably be a pretty cool thing. That's why I'm in favor of economic democracy. I've got to say, man, I think there are flaws of democracy that would be expanded upon if they were applied to private corporations. I understand your meaning completely, and I agree there actually are issues sometimes with scaling up of industry when it comes to um, worker co-ops, which are, you know, democratically owned corporations. Mm -hmm. Thankfully, I've done research on this subject, mm -hmm. and I am happy to inform you that your concerns are unfounded. Worker co-ops oh, are, generally speaking, uh, more resilient more productive, better to work at, and overall more successful, on average, than privately owned corporations, in spite of the fact that they have faced substantial systemic discrimination, particularly from loan vendors and from banks here in this country who aren't willing to test the co-op model. In spite of so that fact... Why, why don't they just outcompete the privately owned model? Because the privately owned model makes one person at the top a lot more money. And it is usually that person at the top who has the impetus to go ahead and make the business to begin with. Whether or not we naturally gravitate towards a more ethical system does not mean we should not move towards a more ethical system. But Humans in their natural state will just rape and murder each question. other. That doesn't answer my question. If 
co-op worker co-ops are so much more productive than privately owned business why don't they just defeat the privately owned businesses because corporations running more efficiently doesn't mean they're going to beat out other industries that's not how our economy works really why not because there are a number of market failures for example if you have privately owned corporations that probably means that whoever owns it is going to be exorbitantly wealthy at least with the larger corporations exorbitantly wealthy people usually have connections with businesses and corporations and yes. politicians. And it is for that reason that there was an enormous amount of lobbying money pumped into Washington every year to specifically favor the financial interests of privately owned corporations, whereas right. the cooperatively owned corporations have essentially no power in Washington. One of the reasons for this is because the economic stratification that comes alongside private um, right. ownership models typically lends itself towards a stratification of power that increases the likelihood of success within a system that already has highly stratified divisions of power. Whereas okay. in a social Socialist society where there is no such um, loophole to take advantage of, no such lobbying bids, no backdoor Washington bid cabinet, you could probably, in all likelihood, see a much greater degree of success from worker co-ops because the deck is no longer stacked in favor of privately owned models. Well, that's a nice hypothetical, but as far as I can see, that there isn't any real evidence to suggest it's backed by data that I'm looking at right in front of me. I can provide well, you the I'm links not if you want. Like that to. data, Sean, provide it. Sure. Is there a chat to the system? Um, here, I'll link it right here. There's the Twitter combo. Chat. There you go. Okay, now I have to go. The beginning segment of that has a number of pieces of information concerning co-ops, indicating mm -hmm. their um, involatility, their ability to withstand economic hardship, and the generally greater level of um, workplace satisfaction that the people within enjoy. This is incomplete. I have more data available that I'm not currently looking at. But you're, you're still not explaining why they don't just outcompete the capitalist ones. No, you, you made a bunch of assertions, but... I don't see how that changes the flow of profit to the worker co-ops away from the capitalist owned businesses. My explanation. I, mean, I don't have time to go through all your data now, do I? No, of course not. And I wouldn't expect that of you, but that is the data or at least some of it. So again, my explanation for why co-ops haven't been as traditionally successful is largely because the way our system currently functions prioritizes private ownership and rewards people with exorbitant amounts of money, which is only possible within a private ownership model. Nobody could become a billionaire if, work, if uh, workers collectively own their businesses. It would be impossible. I, w I would challenge that as well, but in, I'm not really that interested in it. But the alternative is what, exactly? Oh, uh, workplace democracy. I think it would make people happier. In fact, I know it would, because the data seems to back really? that up. Really? But those evil capitalists are just keeping you down. Um, well, it's whatever society you live in. Much in the same way, democratic um, cells within monarchist societies were frequently squashed, raided by the authorities, and even exiled mm. because the models they would try to form didn't really gel with the um, economic interests of those in power. But yeah. So when are you going to rise up? I mean, that depends on a lot of stuff. I would love, wouldn't you love it all to be done peacefully? Um, keep in mind, I'm asking right now for you to consider something that is fairly demonstrably provable to be better not only for the economy, but for human well, beings. I'll just take your word for it that it's demonstrably provable. You're afraid to. Um, I know but, you're averse but, to reading, just like I am. I, I am terribly adverse to it. But uh, it's more because we're in the middle of a debate, and I think it'd be impolite if I took, oh, I don't know, a few hours to go through this. But um, when are you going to rise up? I mean, that depends. Uh, their worker co-op models have been operating within the U.S. for decades now. I feel as though the slightly higher percentage of the economy is uh, currently run by worker co-ops than was the case 20 or 30 years ago. Um, are you asking me when I have a violent revolution planned? Because it's not currently in my schedule. So you know, you're never going to get what you want then? I don't know what you mean. Eventually, society will shift and our priorities will acclimate towards what we believe will function for society better. That could be towards fascism or that could be towards socialism. How we go depends mostly on the cultural predilections of the people who have the decision to make, uh, which you is why I'm so... You the options than fascism or, or socialism? Well, as liberalism dies, Marxist analysis trends towards that. Either um, fascism or socialism rises. We see this happening right now. I mean, it makes a lot of sense if you look at it. Um, the work, the model of neoliberalism is failing most people. Most people are pretty unhappy with how the economy is. Um, and for that reason, people are going to trend towards more radical ideologies. Political how, radicalization how, is on how the many, rise. How many people are unhappy with it then? Um, I don't have like an empirical number in front of me, but I can tell you that economic anxiety has been rising for quite a while. 
I mean, that, sure. that's what Trump campaigned on. Uh, that's why Hillary sure. lost, because she wasn't able to acknowledge the fact that, that our well, economy is... Well, I thought Trump isn't... campaigned on being white and promoting whiteness. Um, I mean, it definitely helped. I imagine if he was black, he would have had a harder time escaping the primaries for the RNC. But I don't think he yeah. campaigned specifically on being white. I don't remember those speeches. Well, not those speeches, but that was always the interpretation I saw in people, in place like, you know, the... Washington Post, New York Post, things like that. Oh, I mean, there's no denying that he appeals to racists. I mean, he received endorsements from essentially every, um, I'm sorry, terribly sorry, far right or neo-Nazi or fascist cell in this country um, while he, you know, ran for presidency. Yeah. So it's fair to assume that whether or not you believe he's racist, he has the racist vote. But no, he also appealed to economic anxiety. It's one of the reasons why people are so disgusted with Hillary, why I and so many other lefties hate Hillary more more than we do any other um, currently yeah, existing yeah, Cancer, yeah. absolute cancer. Yeah. Do, you, do you mind if I, I jump in and direct the conversation a little bit here, or or? Well, I, I, hang on, hang on. So go I'm, ahead I'm and curious. Respond, about sorry. Oh, okay. Go no, go ahead and respond. Oh, all right. Go okay. ahead. You have the floor. Um, yeah. So I'm I'm curious about this because uh, according to you know this data that I'm looking at, I'll send you across in a second. Mm -hmm. uh, firms with fewer than 500 workers account for 99.7 percent of businesses in the U.S. Mm -hmm. And firms with fewer than 20 workers made up 89 percent. So I can't help but feel that you're you're conflating the sort of the concerns that people working in mega corporations have with the concerns that most people don't have, and I mean I don't know what um, like maybe maybe everyone sat there on the tender hooks of economic anxiety, but only twenty five percent of the U S is actually below the federal poverty level. Fifty two percent. Only twenty five percent. Yeah, yeah. Only a quarter of the wealthiest country on the planet is below the federal poverty level. Yeah. First time in human history it's happened. Okay. Um, I don't know where you set the bar, but that's uh, not acceptable the US, to me. The, the, the U.S. Um, um, let, me, uh, let me just check which bureau it was. Well, I was going to ask you guys if you the, wanted to Just the to census take... data, actually. <laughs> they, they set it at $24,000. Beneath that is poverty. That's um, already ludicrously it's... low, by the way. You can't support a family well, on 24000 it is my opinion, yes. In, in California, you probably can't. Um, but a lot of people live in thing, California. Texas, too. New York. Between forty dollars and $120,000 a year is what they describe as middle income, and 52% of your country is on that. That's the majority of the people. Whether not or not your middle income doesn't change the economic anxiety I'm referring to. I never said poverty was the issue. It undeniably think, is. Really, I think I, that. See, now that's the that's the difference. I think. Well, you just brought but, up um, really quickly. You brought up a number of statistics yes. that not only don't disprove my point, they reinforce it. Whether or not, not businesses should be worker owned has nothing to do with the size of the business, and that there are still so many poor people, and the fact that so many people above the poverty line are still feeling that same economic anxiety is an indication that our system is not working for the majority of people. It, I don't agree that it is. It's not. It's for the majority of people. It is working. It's making them wealthy. So just really quickly on your priority tiers, and I think this is a fair characterization of your position here. You feel that Muslim rape gangs, which in their relative level of prominence in your country, have led to a slight uptick in crime, which is significantly less than the crime that's, your country experienced no, that's not, that's a few not decades correct, ago. No, in the that's overall crime rate, crime has been no, overall... That's, not, that's just not correct. That's just we not, that's can look correct. at the overall violent crime rate, if you'd like. It's not violent crime, you fool. It's... What rape specifically? We're, we're, we're bouncing around a lot here, guys. Grooming these these grooming. children are under the impression that these uh, men are their boyfriends or significant others or whatever it is. It's a it's a social problem. Not a, they don't come under violent crime stats, as far as I'm aware. I yeah, see. Yeah, we we covered this. We're bouncing back here now. We were on economics here. I'm, I'm well, curious. No, no, if but this but this the reason I brought that up and I didn't get a chance to because this is an important characterization. I care about America. I care about the people in this country and their happiness. Mm. We're talking about a system right now, which uh, unjustly has a quarter of its population, nearly 100 million people, living below a federal poverty line that many have described to be inadequate in describing um, well, poverty as it actually unjust? functions. How, how, do you how do you define justice in this regard? It is entirely subjective, as are every other characterization we are using in this discussion. So many people would say, no, and I'm, it, no, no, it, we we can we can define. If I could finish the point, Carl, we can define it, and then it's not just subjective. Then we can agree. What? On a def a Wait, are you point. telling me there's an objective poverty line? If we agree, it. Okay. Well, if some people one that disagree. We both agree. Yeah, yeah. Well, who cares? They're not in this conversation. Wait. Really. 
So you think that subjective determinations become objective if somebody agrees with them sufficiently? What are you talking? Enough. Here, hold objective on. Objective just means just means the objective truth of means the empirical, as in it can be means yeah. tested, as in the scientific method can be applied. Whether or not something <laughs> yeah. is considered in poverty is very much a subjective determination well, that is up to I'm, the firm. All I'm saying is, can we agree on a, a thing ourselves? What? <laughs> agree on what? He's, thing? A, he's what? asking if you can both agree in this debate just on. On, on a term, on a, on a thing yes. that we can, we I can, can, I can agree on. Opinion. I can agree on this. There are many right. people, so far objective, who believe right. that the federal poverty rate is not high enough to adequately capture all of the people who experience economic conditions conducive to poverty. Right. And even for the line that we have now, which many would call too low, this is not my characterization only, a quarter of the population of this country is in poverty, wealthiest country in the world. And Sargon, for Sargon, this is the system working for everyone. Yet he feels as though- No, I didn't say that at all. You I said, for, I apologize, we, for most people, this is the system we, functioning. You, you said it Bosh, wasn't working Bosh. for most people, but it is actually working for most people. No, it's the empirical whether, data or not, whether or not three quarters of the population is above the federal poverty line is not an that indication that the people. system is working for most people. That is most people. That. So, Whether or not Sargon, it's working. Sargon Vosh, one yes. second, guys. Aren't we, aren't we kind of in agreement on that poverty thing and we're really debating solutions here? Isn't well, that really I'm, what I still haven't actually gotten on? around to the point because Carl over here is very eager to jump in. That, that is <laughs> most people. That is most people. Are not, are I'm not, not denying poverty, that 75% so that. of the population is most. I'm debating so, that the system working for you does not mean that you are above the federal poverty line. There are many people okay. above the What's federal poverty line who so, nonetheless so experience on. substantial economic deprivation. Let's and the reason I bring this up on. is because I think it's a little bit uncouth that Sargon over here, who apparently cares very much about this epidemic of grooming in his country, is so willing to blithely dismiss the concerns of what may well be over a hundred million people in my country dismissing this system as uh, sufficient, working for most people. I don't think you have your concerns in order for these groups. The selective well, empathy really bothers me. Improvement, if that's what you're suggesting. Well, so, well then let, I have. Sargon respond. You've I have offered improvement. Have I not? So go sure, ahead. Well, I, respond I don't to know the... whether what you're suggesting is actually going to work, and I think that if your idea of worker co-ops was such a brilliant one, then they would just thrive without having to do anything. So and all good systems just, just naturally let, happen let, let without him, people pushing for them. Gosh, why, why are you interrupting me? Because yeah, you can only finish. say so many stupid things before it's important but for me I've to interject. But I've literally not even finished saying my sentence. Why can't I finish? You finished saying one stupid thing. If you had another lined up, you're free to finish well, the you, sentence. Hey, let's, you can say it's stupid, hops, but you man. also haven't proven your point. So all I'm saying, Gosh, is that I'm not persuaded. I haven't had time to go through your data, which you acknowledge. So all I'm saying is so far, I'm not persuaded by your method of argumentation. There's no particular reason to think that worker cops are actually any more effective. Otherwise, why wouldn't they all be? This is like very much like the, uh, the feminists saying, oh, well, women are being paid less than men. If that's the case, how can men ever get a job? What the f <laughs> Okay, so you believe that all good ideas just automatically supersede bad ideas. Not automatically, no. But okay, so you believe action, sometimes that good ideas what? have to be pushed for and advocated Gosh, you keep for. interrupting Gosh. him. You, you ask Gosh. him a question, you don't let him finish. It was a yes-no question, and he gave the yes. No, he, he, he wants to clarify Other people are in this discussion, Vosh? It's you. They want to talk. Yeah, I know, and I really would like to explain my position. But you keep jumping in without letting me I explain won't, I won't let him interrupt you, Vosh, either. Come on, we want to hear what you have to say as well. <laughs> okay, let, just let him. We want a little bit of a dialogue. Carl. Vosh. And I'm, I'm curious, I, like, I want to know Gosh. your solutions. Obviously, you're debating the problem, but not the solutions. <laughs> Go ahead, Sargon. Right. With the repeated action in the market, you will see trends. Are we agreed? Yes. No interruptions? Wow. There is no particular reason that you have given me so far for me to think that if a worker cop was more profitable, more effective, and a better way of actually producing wealth than privately owned business, that that wouldn't supplant privately owned business. These things do happen if you look just through the history of anything, really. Better ideas do tend, as long as they're given enough free action to operate, to supplant the bad ideas that came before. Those that don't end up with revolution. The example of um, 
work a co-op. I asked you a yes/no question. How... No, hold on, Bob. Gosh. Let him finish. You can I ask your question see... again if he doesn't answer. Go yeah. ahead, Targa. I I don't see how these are being held down. Now, I'm not saying that I'm massively well informed in this regard. I don't spend much time concerning myself with work cops because I'm an entrepreneur. I don't work for anyone. Um, so I'm more than happy to admit I might be ill informed in this, but I don't see what's preventing them from succeeding other than their own structure. Um, but also, I really don't think this is that much of a big deal. I mean, 20 workers, firms with 20 workers or fewer, are 89% of the businesses in the united states i really don't think that the the evil capitalist is the guy owning a firm who's got 20 or fewer workers so for most this has people, nothing to do not only with my question Vosh, but with the Vosh, well, 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 really quickly and this is pointed no, i recognize Vosh, the I'm, importance I'm of not interrupting but for somebody who's concerned me? with the direction of the debate i was beginning a point and asked him a yes no question and he has talked for Vosh. two minutes in response to it but, you, but let him make his point, Vasho. And if he doesn't answer your question, you ask your question again. For another three minutes of another set of unrelated responses that write have nothing to do with my question. Down, write yes. your question down if you think you're going to So we can it, continue okay? to respond with unrelated points. This is not you, unrelated, Vosh. you've done many unrelated points to your balance. No, I've actually been pretty you. pointed in everything that I've talked about here. And we can well, go over the VOD later and you, go over it. But I guarantee you that for every pivot that has taken place, it has been Sargon avoiding a direct question. So I'm, I'm going to I'm, I'm, I'm going to ask question. a question here. So I didn't. Well, like, I asked you, you a I'm yes, not, I'm not, no I'm not taking question. Questions from you right now, Vosh. Let, let You're not taking questions in a discussion. For, for, 18, for 89, yeah, because it's not your turn to talk. Can, why can't you understand that? You realize you're making an appeal to authority, it's... a fallacious one, when you suggest <laughs> the moderator determines whether or not it's your turn to talk, right? Okay. I could, so, be, I could yeah, be wrong. Yeah, I'm, I'm willing to, to admit Adam's that. Appeal yeah. to authority. The moderator Adam, does not have Adam. an authority on this subject. Well, good. I'm glad. I'm glad we've. We've reached a lighter point. Let's all just <laughs> calm. Let's all just take a breath here. Okay, so, Bosh, there's plenty of time for you to make your point, and we we want you to make your point for heaven's sakes. That's why we invited you. Right. So, so are you so done, no, Carl? No, not, not so, no, Bosh. Not so. I, I'm going finish to finish my point, so I can explain to you why it's related. You've already gone over is, what I... you're talking about, but feel free. Bosh, Bosh, Bosh. <laughs> Firms with fewer than 20 workers, I don't believe, are the giant illiberal tyrannies over people's lives that you're thinking of, right? It seems to me that you're talking about the uh, the multinational corporations that can afford lobbyists, that, put, that lobby politicians night and day to get favorable conditions to them, which otherwise other companies don't get. I agree. I think that's bad, too. I find that to be a form of institutionalized bribery, but I don't see what is either preventing you from starting a work cop or what compels you to be able to enforce that on other people okay so that had nothing to do with my question i'm so going to try question, again what is now. your question vosh go ahead yeah. i forget to but i'm going to bring us back to the actual discussion we were having so well, essentially about, sargon's about, point here how, is in spite whoa 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 if you in, forgot how do you know he did in the in the hey, adam <laughs> i'm sorry in the absence of, of course, he, he has a point there, right? So while we're going to avoid reading the evidence that I have provided you that worker co-ops are, on average, more successful and more resilient than traditionally owned businesses. Then all you need well, to do well, is... Well, Carl, Carl, yeah, naughty boy, you're boy you're not going to talk to Naughty me. boy, Carl. I don't need to. I don't need to fallaciously appeal to the authority to tell you to shut the fuck up while I talk. No, no, let's uh, let's not go there. So, hold on, hold on. Which one of the links is the one that uh, provides what you're talking about, so I can look over it? It's just a data document. You can click through those links. I don't remember. Because the first two, like one of them is like the International Socialist Review, and the second one's a co-op website. Like these are not. objective on this time you're free to look through all of them some of them some of them are broader um uh uh, metadata analyses on the success of worker co-ops i see one that's like a science hub article but it's about uruguay like is there something (laughs) that's what i'm asking is there something specific wait the uruguay one is relevant i can't help you if you're not going to read through it well i don't know if that's that's relevant to it like a hour in america wait are we are we doing a literature review or are we talking about this point specifically no i'm I'm asking you said that you have evidence that co-ops are more effective i can't i can't i i can't help you spark notes the links no, I'm I've given you. Which one of the links that you provided? Do you want I don't me to look at this. I like compiled 10? this a while ago. Just click through them. 
Okay, I just so I don't. Can we, I don't can we get to the discussion? Socialist review, but that's fine. You guys, that's, can you can you can look at the data and come to the conclusions that you like. So, so Washi, why don't you, you just the, wait? Can we? For the are we? This is this is actually incredible. Why, why can't Washi I ask a question of you? You've asked a lot of you, questions. Whoa, 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 whoa! Hey, Te call, call. Bosch, technically, Bosch has the floor. You you finish what you're oh, saying, sorry, okay. Sargon. So go ahead, Bosch. Ask your question. So, your assertion here is that if worker co-ops were more functional than non-worker co-ops, they would have just taken over. The idea here, implicitly, is that if an idea is better, it will simply succeed. It doesn't need advocacy. What you are leaving out is the Disagree. fact that- Disagree. Disagree. Okay. What quickly did I mischaracterize from your position? You're suggesting that an idea doesn't need advocacy. That's ridiculous. Okay. Well then, no, you suggested that worker co-ops, if they were better, would simply supersede privately owned corporations. Well, if, if they're more successful, that is advocacy for them. The, the, the action of doing it is advocacy for it. That's not what advocacy means. Advocacy means people making active attempts to push for policies that support worker co-ops to advocate for them. You, but you, you don't think that actually doing the thing is a form of advocacy for it? No, that is not what advocacy means. I, I disagree. Very often, I disagree. doing the thing happens think, after but, but you, you engage in advocacy it. for the thing. So, for example, right. people like me, or people perhaps more economically, like, a, like economics professors or, or business owners, when they go out there and they talk about the viability of worker co-ops, they're engaging in advocacy and that advocacy is one of the characteristics that can lead to the supremacy of a better idea. Your idea that it is only the better idea which supersedes in the end is flatly wrong. That's History. Not That's not my idea. I. Is it possible You're to ascribe to me positions, positions to you? I don't hold. I, I know it's very difficult for me to ascribe positions to you that you don't hold because you don't seem to hold any positions you have flatly stated I you hold, hold five minutes ago. But you're never asking. But me never the positions. ones you you're seem to claim you hold, do you? Sorry? Ask him his position, Bosch. What is your position? So why um, do you, so you just spent like literally three minutes talking about how you don't see why worker co-ops wouldn't have already succeeded over privately owned corporations if they were better. Is that not correct? Yeah, well you're you're talking about economic competitiveness, are you not? I'm talk uh, that's what you were talking about. You were the one who made, went off on the yeah, point no, that I, these, I, if these I were better, they would have just succeeded. I am trying to speak to that point too, but are you also not talking about economic competitiveness? In regards to what specifically? Worker-owned co-ops compared to private What do you mean businesses? talking about? I brought it up earlier. That's what I meant by talking about, yeah. So just mentioned? Like it's not relevant to the particular argument? I, I just said it at some point? I subject you were talking about, Walsh. I'm talking about why I believe democracy in the workplace would make america better right okay so but not more not more economically productive no it would maintain a comparable perhaps slightly higher level of economic productivity i haven't seen any evidence to suggest that worker co-ops make less money for example right but if the, if they made more money and they were more appealing environments why would they not succeed on their own merits i actually already it's explained just, that just, to you it's just the the, the conspiracy that the entire it's not a conspiracy down, right? it is the entire economic superstructure Bosh, just okay. can you can you restate your argument we'll see if sargon can steal man your argument sure Basically. honestly yeah. i'm actually not that i'm not an expert on worker cops and he's speaking to a hypothetical model a hypothetical prediction that doesn't exist no so i'm speaking to existing people. worker co-ops that have already functioned and have already been statistically demonstrable to function properly we're not talking about any floozy hypotheticals we're not talking about any wily theory we're talking about very basic high school level interpretations of data that indicate that there are benefits to worker co-ops now not saying i've gone over this before but you just said that you think they would be as efficient, if not more efficient. So that's not a concrete. That's the a data matrix. seems to, yes, because data doesn't give you a literal point dot matrix on how successful a predicted business model is going to be. There are always yeah. variables. So yes, yeah, but I'm not in really the ballpark, in discussing or more the so, hypothetical success of then, you're, then you're not interested in discussing data. You don't have the data on the success of the worker co-ops. I this linked you data model. on the success no. of worker co-ops. No. You, you, you're missing my point. You're talking about something that could be true. No, I'm talking about that something that is another, true. Right? The data indicates that. Okay. Okay. Well, then I guess we're in the world where worker co-ops took over then. No, we're in the world where worker co-ops are a good idea, but right. just because something so, is a good idea does not mean okay. that it will automatically succeed. 
Okay, how about this? We'll 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 go to the next. You subject. you no no no. You actually can't understand this. You're missing no, your own you point. The argument I, you I have to prove. The argument you have to prove is that there is a reason why worker co-ops aren't right now the dominant form of economic production. That isn't because they don't gel well with how the economic superstructure currently functions, which prioritizes private ownership and um, exchange know, of to, resources between I'd have capital. I have to do some research. Like, I, I don't know. Wait, then why, wait, then, wait, wait, wait. Then why not just say, this data looks interesting and compelling. I don't have any counterarguments. We can come back to it later. I haven't had time to look at it. I haven't had time to look at it. We've already said this. That's what I just but said. I'm, so you, wait, if you, you don't have any data to... to disprove the claim, then why would you continue to make uh, 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 bad faith counterarguments when you don't have anything to back up your assertion that there's a reason why worker co-ops aren't succeeding? Just I say, I don't why. know. I, I answered. I, you. I answered directly. Econo okay. Economic All superstructure, right. um, political elites in power, yeah. bank discrimination, yeah. loan discrimination. I went over points okay. that can be empirically determined for why worker co-ops haven't I'll taken off. I'll assume that's all correct, okay? I'll just assume that's all correct and that it's the evil capitalist keeping those... Never said it was the evil capitalist. Like I said before, democratic cells in uh, monarchist countries were also kept down under the monarchy. Economic systems, when they don't work well with the predominant super system, are often suppressed. Now, because that so was a monarchy, it is the evil capitalist keeping them down. Then you're acting as though it's a conspiracy when this is literally a fact of how different economic structures interact. I'm not saying it's. Also, it's funny that you would um, impugn it as a conspiracy when your channel is rife with conspiracism. What conspiracism do I? Cultural Marxism, the idea, the Gamergate idea, when that feminists were. Did, oh, you, oh, you asked me Marxism? that feminists when were infiltrating. Time, that feminists were infiltrating like game reviewers to take down like the gamer. You've engaged in 9-11 conspiracism. What? You joked around with all writers about whether Heather Heyer died of a heart attack um, at Charlottesville. At time, one at a time. Wait, I wasn't interested was, in going over your conspiracism. Time? I was interested in going over the worker co-ops. Oh, you seem co very excited about it. I'd love to talk about it. There is no what's point of your career that isn't rife with gaffes to be made fun of. But that's, in this instance, fine, I care more about course, worker co-ops than I do that's your fine. low IQ. I don't IQ. care about worker co-ops. So let's talk about something. They, then why did you pretend to care about in. this? All right, then I take you it. I'm taking the belt on this. So yes, I have provided <laughs> information that indicates that worker co-ops are not only more successful, but also an explanation for why they haven't taken off. And I have data indicating yeah. they make people happier. So I can say pretty concretely that, yeah, this is something we should look into in the future as an economic model that might lead to the betterment of this country. And the thing is, I don't even disagree with you. I'm not even saying they're not good. Backpedaling Carl, walking away oh. from the point. Right, okay. Okay, Vosh. So let, do you guys want was to take that, a position on universal basic income? No, 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 like you, you guys want to you, move on? You, you are right. I'm definitely backpedaling, Vosh. Sorry. I mean, I What's can't the, see your uh, feet right now. I don't know if you got a little cycle down there. Oh, three. Mm -hmm. Using them all at once. I'm not a huge fan of UBI under capitalism. So U UBI is universal basic income. Uh, hang on, it's, hang on. People hang on. are talking I, about it. Go ahead, Sagar. Yeah, look, 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 let's let's talk about like the the alternatives, here, right? I mean, like, because what you're proposing isn't actually uh, socialism, is it? Um, well, socialism is defined by two basic characteristics. Market socialism involves purely the democratic ownership of the means production, whereas um, a, a, I guess what would you call a Marxian socialism involves the abolition of the commodity model. On my channel, I advocate for the first one. I advocate for market socialism, following anarcho syndicalism. So I'm um, so so I'm very much in favor of some forms of um, not free trade, but uh, open trade. I like open open trade. I like uh, markets. How, how do you distinguish free trade from open trade? What's the definition there? Well, free trade usually means like a, like laissez-faire, like no government re re restrictions, what have you. And that usually leads up to a bunch of problems concerning market failures or externalities or monopolies. So um, in the absence of those things, which I think are pretty cringe, not based, uh, very blue-pilled, I, uh, I advocate for um, uh, some restrictions on market socialism. Yeah. Okay. But um, but you you are against the idea of private business ownership, right? Where um, where you can just own something unilaterally as an individual, yes. Really? So an entrepreneur isn't allowed to be their own boss. They, as long as they're the only worker, certainly. If they uh, really? if they work with other people, though, then yeah, they would all get in. Realistically, Is that though, a form of oppression. No. So why can't they hire someone? Democracy is a form of oppression. No, I'm asking you if. An entrepreneur with his own business hiring someone is a form of oppression to that person they've hired. They can hire, but then they are both owners of that mode of production. That's not what hiring means. 
Hi, no, hiring you can hire a CEO. Like you can hire people. Sure, and, but I'm I'm talking about an entrepreneur who owns his own small business, wants to expand by hiring some assistant. Uh, the assistant doesn't own the business, but they are paid a fair wage. Is that unacceptable? In the Marxian sense, that would be considered exploitation. Yes. Yeah, Though I should it, say, just to quickly it, clarify, just to quickly clarify, from your perspective, to, yeah, well, yeah, I'm a, I'm a Marxist. Just to quickly yeah. clarify, though, really quickly, just so we avoid any absurdities, um, I don't believe that you necessarily need a democratic production model for very, very small industries. If this is like a backyard project or like two people working together and they like hire a third person to do art assets, I don't think it's necessary to impose any model on this. I consider these small time enough that they can operate independently it's when you file so for example what, for a business okay, license hang on, hang on. just to clarify hang on. what's what's the what's the cutoff point there then i don't know it would be determined democratically we would just have a vote on it i don't think there should be like a hard line but on that. if it's not a democratic business who's having the vote well the vote would be in the government the government would decide that above a certain oh. size all businesses are required to be democratically owned right okay and we don't know what that size will be well, well, no. I mean, it'd be arbitrary, right? We could decide it would be six people. We yeah. could decide it would be 12 people in a given yearly income. I don't know. I, I mean, I agree. And and I want to know, and that's the problem, isn't it? The fact that the the structure you're proposing it actually hinges on this arbitrary question. No, no. All laws concerning this sort of stuff are arbitrarily determined. OSHA, tax laws, all of these are just arbitrary determinations the government has set as a bar. What are you talking about? Sure. And are you happy with that? There's no way to objectively determine where these lines should be. Okay. Can we can we get a point of clarification just on the employer employee uh, relationship, Fosh? Some socialists want to abolish that. What what is your position? I want to abolish the like employee employer model. The yeah employee employer relationship. You're kind of talking about it a bit when you're talking like you're saying. Uh, if you're doing a project in your backyard, then that's fine because that relationship is going to be dissolved in a short period of time. Like what, what, uh, but mo some socialists want to see it dissolved altogether. Uh, yeah, that depends on how hard you draw the line. I've never met a single socialist who believes that like two people, like one person paying another person for like to help with a school project should, should mean both of them collectively own the product or anything. Well, There's I've, obviously I've a socialists line. I've met socialists who think that. Go ahead. Sorry. I've met socialists who think that. So I'm what now? I don't know. That's not what I'm advocating for, and right. you're arguing with me, so I don't see how it's relevant. Okay. So I, well, then I'm just since asking you, for since you brought a clarity. Yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd be happy to clarify. Yeah. So I, I don't like exploitation. I like people being happy. I like people being productive. I think that the, um, the relationship, the employee-employer model, um, very often leads to bad outcomes um, because I don't think freedom and democracy mean very much if we are tied economically to a system that requires us to essentially be subservient to those who pay for our bread, pay for our rent. Now, obviously, so you're, you're for you're for making that illegal. You're for abolishing that. I'm for above a certain business size that would be arbitrarily determined by a democratically elected government, all businesses being required to be democratically owned. So at a certain point, they uh, you would have to uh, uh, implement some kind of wage threshold to make sure that no person makes so much more than another and everyone would have a um, uh, the ability to vote on like key business decisions. The extent to which this would be possible and the exact ways in which it would be implemented would vary from business to business. Okay, right. so what would your ideal uh, cutoff point be? I don't really have. I mean, I don't know. I feel like it's three people, a four or five. I three people. I I don't care. Why are you trying to hold me down to a number that I don't really care? Well, about? Well, it seems about? it seems relevant because you're talking about like at the moment you're talking about like ninety something percent of all of the workers in the U.S. Well, ideally, we would end up capturing almost every worker in the U.S. in the democratic right, uh, model. Okay. Right, okay. So you mentioned that you're a Marxist. I found that very interesting. Um, why are you a Marxist? Why do you think that's an appropriate method of the analysis of analysis to the world? Um, well, for one, Marxian uh, economic critique is literally the foundation of modern sociology. Modern sociology is built almost entirely on critical theory, or at least most relevant sociologists yeah. are. So that entire branch of study and every bit of influence it has across the world derives almost entirely from Marx. Additionally, I think the Marxian um, historical view, the dialectic, um, uh, the historical dialectic, yeah. is a pretty good way of examining history. Additionally, additionally, I think he has some cogent critiques of capitalism as they exist. But does it not bother you that his critique is one-dimensional and his predictions are all wrong? His predictions have, for the most part, been correct. He did not have a Which date ones? set. 
Which predictions were you referring to? Okay, well, the, the first one, that the proletariat would increase as a percentage of the population and become poorer. That was wrong. Um, well, the actual relative level of... Um, um, uh, I'm sorry, how do you say? Um, economic stratification has increased significantly with a smaller number of people holding... Could you that repeat what you the, felt he was wrong about? Yeah, the predicted that the proletariat would increase both as a percentage of the population and they would become poorer. Well, right now, wealth is being consolidated in the hands of a fewer and fewer number of people, with smaller and smaller numbers of businesses That's controlling... That's actually not true. There are more billionaires now than ever. That is has nothing to do with what I just said. Wealth is being consolidated in the hands of a smaller and smaller group of people. That has nothing That's to do not with true. whether or not there are... Yes, it is. Because no, the economics... Not. Okay, hold on. The economic stratification that exists within our society has been growing, with the relative bottom 90% of the population growing relatively poorer to the wealth of the top 10%. And even within yeah, that top 10%, there's measure, still huge... Why would you measure it in those relative terms? Because, because, it's, of, because it's been 100... Because it's been 150... That, that because we've seen 150 years of technological advancement since Marx. Obviously, people are wealthier in a flat sense. Proportionally, we are poorer now than we were then compared yeah, to the yeah. upper echelons of society. The, pro the, the, the actual result of what's happened has been the inverse of what Mar Marx predicted. Marx did not predict that in the future people would literally have lower relative GDP per capita. Marx predicted that there would be more proletariat and Which there are. Poorer. And there are. No, there are fewer proletariat and they are richer. Well, there are more proletariat in a, in a flat sense. And he did not say poorer in no. that... Well, the population of They're, the world has gone up. That was a bit of a joke there. I hope you would have caught that. The proletariat are, are, the, are the working men, are they not? Like yes, the, the anyone who's not workers. bourgeois. Yeah, the industrial workers. Yeah, but that's a much smaller per percentage, and they get paid more. So Marx is wrong. The, the wait, second, wait, 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 wait. What percentage of the population do you think is proletariat? Oh, well, I mean, like, if we're talking just, like, working class, about 25%. No, proletariat means those who do not own the means of production, and it would be more in the ballpark probably of 99 right. to 95% of the population. So the, the middle class have become the proletariat. The middle class definition. have always been the proletariat in a Marxian sense. How much do you know about well, Marx? Where, didn't, suppose, you, didn't you brag about reading Capital? I think so. No, no, no. That's literally the Marxian definition. Didn't you lie about reading Capital? No, this, I read it when I was like 24. Okay, this is, just so you know, the flub that you just made is like sixth grade level. Proletariat wow. does not you teach, mean You teach Marxism poor. in sixth grade. If, if you were one of my students, then you would well, be more educated on it than this. How, how, how about this? I, I find it unlikely. That Just so you know, proletariat, proletariat means worker, bourgeois means owner. If you own the means of production, right. that is to say if so, you're a business owner or you have equity in a business, you are right. a bourgeois. And if you aren't, you are proletariat. But that's that's kind of undermines your own position because that means that the proletariat are doing really well at the moment. Well, proportional to the upper echelons of society, no. Economic stratification has increased tremendously. And in line with their, Marx's... Their and, grandparents and in doing brilliant. Yes, because it, technological advancements have led to a general increase in the quality of life. Marx didn't right. say that wouldn't happen. Marx lauded capitalism right. for raising the standard of living for the average person. Marx lauded capitalism for being preferable to feudalism. You yeah. suggesting that, that he didn't... That he said people would be like flat poor in the future is ridiculous he mischaracterization. Said of his position hey, well, hey, I, I hate to keep interrupting here guys but just to get a clear position what is what is your positions on there being like the super wealthy the the billionaire class i mean that's what you guys are talking about well he he said that they would decrease as a percentage of the population as well but that's not true as well like, no i didn't say billionaires i said not, the bourgeois not billionaires, the bourgeois. And the fact, by the way, that there are more billionaires than ever is evidence that more wealth is being consolidated but, but into the hands of fewer people. Not well, just you're, you're, hmm? you're talk I just want a clar clarity on your position. You're talking like that's a that's a problem. That's something that needs to be. I'm just clarifying his misunderstanding of extremely Bayesian Marxist economics. Right. So, so, so socialists sometimes they want to cap what a person can be worth. So what is your position on that? Sargon, what is your position on it? You go first, Vosh. I don't think there should be a flat cap. I think that society okay, so, should be structured in such a way that there would be no way to become a billionaire. So, okay. So, so, so your cap would be some form of taxation or something like that. Well, the, like the you cap... Would, you would... 
So go ahead. Oh, sorry. Just under every billionaire, there are tens or hundreds of thousands of workers. No one just becomes a billionaire like themselves in a small project. It's always a top up system. Yeah, if that system was not right, just, they're also not just like Scrooge McDuck swimming around the. I never said that. Gold. Many billionaires well, that contribute kind of enormously it, that, that to our economy. One at a time, guys. Go comes ahead, across Laura. though, because like you, you, you say a billionaire. I mean, a billionaire is only a billionaire, like hypothetically considering the aggregate value of their assets, but the assets themselves are like buildings and, and trucks and planes and things that are things that employ people, right? So it's not like there's... It's, and all those like, building and trains would still exist if they were collectively owned by the business this person runs. I don't think they would, though. Well, wait, 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 hold on. So really quickly, a billionaire, yeah. what does a billionaire do? Usually, well, one of the thing, one of the things they do. Wait, is I, buy well, a I was. Plane, it was a right? rhetorical question that I was going to answer. <laughs> well, okay, but just to point, well, really question, quickly because I want to point out. Question. I want to point out something before well, I am straw man. I'll, I'll let you answer, Sargon. What do billionaires do? Go ahead, Bosch. Um, a billionaire is it, it's in control of an enormous amount of wealth, tremendous number of assets. I don't think that they're like destructive inherently to whatever system in which they exist. However, the reason they're that wealthy is because the profits of whatever business they own or whatever business they own equity in are being siphoned up into them and they get the assets. Now, whether or not that person is a billionaire is irrelevant to the existence of those assets. The assets are bought and paid for by the labor of the workers. Even if the billionaire didn't own all those buildings, didn't own all of those assets, they would still exist. Many billionaires are wealthy due to stock options. If all of their stock options were dissolved and distributed equally amongst their workers, that's the same amount of wealth in existence, the same amount of total economic productivity. It's just being distributed democratically amongst those who, well, work for that business. What, what do billionaires do, Sargon? Uh, sorry, say again. What do billionaires do? Yeah, he he's answering. What do billionaires do? You can respond to what he said or answer. What do billionaires? Oh, do? um, well, they they own businesses generally, um, and in the process of owning businesses, they are essentially, um, I don't know how how to put it, like the captains of industry that are driving forward the economy as much as we dislike that. You but want I'm I'm actually more? really curious. What? Like, uh, sorry. I'm, Go, no, go ahead, Sarah. Um, so I, I'm I'm curious because Marx actually does specify about the middle class and how they're going to be subsumed into the proletariat. But you're declaring them to be proletariat first. No, uh, they've always to... been proletariat. It was never bourgeois proletariat middle class. The dichotomy well, was between why, just that too. Why does Marx actually stress the middle class in the Communist Manifesto then? Because the middle class, for one, the middle class were never not part of the of the proletariat or the bourgeois what a middle class person meant to him was somebody who existed on the interstice between um opulent wealth through owning business and somebody who worked the subservient wage slave cuck wage cuck job uh, of a factory worker or a farmer the middle class was simply someone from the merchant class or a petite bourgeois who was fortunate enough to occupy the middle tier of society without themselves becoming its leader and we have yeah. seen the middle class being squeezed out of existence over for the past couple of decades that's so hardly that's a marxian true. take that's been discussed by mainstream that's not true, though that's not true wait wait just percent of your country are middle class wait quickly just to clarify so you disagree with the characterization that i have made that we generally agree the middle class is being squeezed out of existence here in this country I, i'm not, i'm not saying that there aren't pressures on the middle class i'm saying that 52 percent of your country is middle class middle class doesn't mean above the poverty line but not ultra wealthy that is not the definition of middle class that if is it, the definition that few that pew are using if that's the definition of middle class literally not starving but also not a billionaire then no, i can between, see between between forty thousand and one hundred twenty thousand is i think the one that pew are using here. Forty thousand as a family that's middle class I didn't say it was a family. Per individual, yeah, then. You're, you're in the 1%. Yeah, well done, Bosch. Thanks. I'm you're reasonably... In, you're in the 52%, then. I have never heard a description of middle class which uses those statistics. But if that okay. is the definition, but, but we my, are... My point is, you're, you're, you're erasing what Marx understood, as far as I thought. It doesn't 80% the of the population live paycheck to let, paycheck? Let him finish one at a time. Ahead, it, it doesn't matter whether they live, a, live paycheck to paycheck. That's pretty um, relevant. 
no, you're subsuming what Marx des describes as the middle class into the proletariat. Even when I think that's an inaccurate reading of Marx, I don't think that he would define them that way. Um, and I think that you know that. I don't know why you would say that they are proletariat. I, I apologize for what may sound like arrogance, but pardon me for not trusting your interpretation of Marxian economics when oh, you didn't I'm, I'm know what proletariat and bourgeois meant. No, I do. I th or I thought I did, but you came up with a different definition. I mean... Yeah. Marx, Marx We're, distinguishes... I, okay, between... so to clarify, when people in an economic sense talk about middle class, we're usually talking about people who live above the exploit, the exploitation, the expectation, the, uh, the, the, the pain of paycheck to paycheck, wage slave existence. This is usually people who live comfortably. Now, traditionally, this was like the man would hold a factory job and that he was paid a comfortable wage and the woman would stay at home. That was the American middle class for a really long time, from the 40s up until the 1980s, more or less, though, it, though obviously things fluctuate. What I'm looking at right now, this Pew Research poll, doesn't seem like it's using the same term middle class uh, uh, that, econo that economists use. It's using middle class to literally prescriptively describe where you fit on existing income brackets. And we're, that doesn't really gel with what Marx would have called middle class. We're spending well, a lot of I mean, time way, defining middle class here. Well, hang on, like, hang on. Go the, ahead. Way, the way that he defines it in the Communist Manifesto is just small tradespeople, shopkeepers, and retired tradesmen. Uh, these are the lowest strata of the middle class in his words. And if you just compare that to like most the way the American economy works, like that's that's eighty nine percent of the entire American economy he's describing there. Eighty nine percent of the American economy are tr retired tradesmen and others. No, a uh, uh, small business owners. Eighty nine percent of the American economy. Wait, so you're saying what does that have to do with the population of the? country well i i'm saying that i don't believe that the middle class as marx des described them would be the proletariat i think the proletariat is something different well well no the the if small business owners would be the petite bourgeois yeah small that's what he's small bourgeoisie as class, isn't it yes that's what he's describing as the middle class no <laughs> um small tradespeople, shopkeepers yeah that's those not... are the petite bourgeois those yeah, would be bourgeois, and, and not proletariat. Eighty-nine percent of jobs in the U U.S. are small businesses. What does That's that what have to? What that. does that have to do with the relative numbers of people who are middle class in this country? If they're small business owners, they're part of because the bourgeoisie. Because Marx's prediction is that they would become proletariat, but they haven't. Uh, what is that? How many total number of small businesses in this country are there? Um, let me just get the number. Uh, firms with fewer than 500 workers accounted for 99% of the 5.6 million employer firms in the United that's, States. That's that's how many people are employed and how many firms there are. How many small business uh, owners are there? That's how many people there? are employed. That's the number of firms. What does that have to do with how many small business owners there are? How many firms are there in total? That is the number. Small, that is 5.6 million are... in total, and 99.7% of them are owned have fewer than 500 workers. 5.6 million is less than 2% of the American population. Is that what we're calling the middle class? That is the, yeah, well, that's the start. But it's not just, but th this is the thing with Marx, isn't it? It's literally. No, this is the thing with you. you. What are you talking about? No, listen, listen why didn't you just engage what I just said? I did. That so Mar what you the, just the described Marxist is less than 2% of, of the population. Yeah, but that that's that's not representative. And of the middle class really income, is shrinking. No, but that's not representative of how income is distributed amongst the United States. We're not talking about the distribution of income. You were talking about the petite bourgeois, people who own small businesses. Yes, but this is what I'm saying is I think Marx's definition isn't very applicable to what you're looking at here. Of course, it was 150 years ago. Nobody uses paleo-Marxist theory to describe oh, modern business interactions. You were the one claiming that his theories were wrong. Based on the characterizations yes. that he used back then, based on the terminology he used as they were applicable to definitions back then, he was right in the respect you're referring to. There used to be a proportionally higher number of small tradesmen than there are today, what we would now call small business owners. Okay, well, what's small in your in what's small in your definition? I don't recall what capital had to say on how many people you employed before you stopped being petite bourgeois and started being bourgeois. I I don't. I'm afraid I don't okay, have numbers on that. Okay, but fewer than twenty workers are eighty nine percent of your economy. Like, how much higher was it? I I don't. What does the relative proportion of how many people are employed by a small business have to do with the total number of petite bourgeoisie? 
There are. Because that is the petite bourgeoisie, isn't it? No, the petite bourgeoisie are the owners, not the percent of people employed by small firms. Right, okay. So you, that that's, yeah, but that's my point. That doesn't accurately describe any amount of resource distribution. Okay. Just to relate, I, 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 but this has nothing to do with the middle class. What? We're, I don't have a problem with small businesses as a concept. But we're arguing over the, definitions here. Do yeah, are we okay. both in favor of getting middle class Americans up, middle class? Uh, I don't know, citizens of the world. I know you're English, Sargon. So are we? Yeah. Are we for elevating the middle class? Like, why are we arguing over definitions here if we're in agreement on finally some point? I don't know, Sargon. Are you in favor of raising the middle class? Um, actually, no, I think they're not okay. doing too badly. I'm actually, I'm actually more concerned about um, the, the lower stratas, actually. I think that is more of a concern. And I do think that something needs to be done about it. But I don't, um, I don't think that imposing a, uh, a, 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 a worker-owned co-op model on people is actually helpful. Um, I don't think that's going to be the solution. I mean, the data disagrees with you in these respects. The main problem that co-op models have actually is scaling up. The further up the scale, the greater degree of economic striation takes place within the worker co-ops. We can see so, this with the Pendragon Corporation, for example, from uh, just, from Spain. Just on the original, just on the original point, Vosh, you, uh, why did you bring up the middle class? Do you want to raise the middle class? I didn't bring up the middle, middle class? class. Well, you, we've been arguing about what the middle class is for like Mondragon, 15 sorry. minutes here. Like, what's the point of why are we arguing about the middle? Class? I don't. I didn't bring it up. I don't know point? the middle. What, what Marx would have described as the middle class is dissimilar to what we currently refer to as the middle Describe. class. So there's a discrepancy there. Yeah, so yeah. You, Most what, people... Are you people, in favor of a larger middle class or a smaller middle class? Where I don't like to... I, I mean, I personally don't think that by middle class do we mean petite bourgeois or by middle class do we mean people who make like a middle amount of money who live comfortably? Well, I think I think that we really, in the modern sense, do not mean Marx's definition. I think we're talking about those people who are on like on average, I don't know, 70 grand or whatever it was. Uh, the households are on seventy grand. Then I don't. The, then I don't care. I ca I care about I care about those who own and those who work. Um, that is what I care about. I think that right now this country is ludicrously stacked in favor of those who own capital and ludicrously stacked out of favor of those who work for capital. And I want. But if you're a small businessman who doesn't have very much capital, but you still own a business, uh, is that not a desirable position for most people to be in? Uh. You mean is being a small business owner desirable? Yeah, Be better than not owning a small business, I suppose. Right. Okay. Well, that's that's fine. That's everyone fine. can be a small business owner in a in a co op model. Yeah, everyone collectively owns the means of production. See, that's what it's about, isn't it? Yes, about democracy. Right, but I mean, ultimately, you'd break that eventually down, following its logical conclusion, to everyone being self employed entrepreneur. No, no, no. Just any time. Uh, 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 the, the idea ultimately is relegating hierarchy. The reason we want democracy in a country is because countries are very powerful and powerful countries have influence over people. And we want those people to have control, at least to an extent, over what the country does. Same with businesses. Businesses, once they reach a certain size, become very, very powerful. Even small businesses are powerful to those who work there. For that reason, I want those places to be accountable to those who work there. I want democracy and freedom for those who work for a living. I'm fortunate enough to not have to work for a living in the Marxian sense, because I do my own contract or work with you two, obviously. Same with Sargon, I assume. We have our own means of production in that respect. But I remember fondly, I say sarcastically, how difficult labored life can be. And a lot of those problems come not from the intrinsic nature of wage slavery, but instead from the fact that our system undemocratically, unjustly, um, prioritizes the well-being of the uber-wealthy, of the business owner, over the common man. See, I, I think that you have a kind of myopic view of things. Because, I mean, if, if you've got a firm with fewer than 20 people in, the idea of accountability is not just constricted to raw voting power. It's, I mean, there are lots of ways of holding your boss accountable that don't require you to compel him to do something that would be against his, uh, his business sense. You wouldn't you be com talk to him. Well, you wouldn't be compelling him. You would collectively own the place. There'd be no need to compel. Well, yeah, I mean, you wouldn't have a boss in that case, I suppose. Right, you'd all uh, be bosses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's... Uh, Lovely we've, lovely. we've been going idea. for about an hour and a half. Guys. Unions, by the way. If you're advocating for unions to wait a way to hold your boss accountable unions without a collective ownership yeah. model. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm yeah, totally yeah, fine with that. Yeah. I agree. Well, that would that would be something that I think people should do. But I, I think my problem really is about you compelling other people to do this. I mean, how would you bring this about? You didn't say. 
Bring what about? Well, I mean, the ideally, the, um, the worker co-op model. Well, ideally, it would be voted in democratically. But what if people didn't vote for it? Well, if people didn't vote for it, then I lose, don't I? That's why I do public advocacy work. If you're arguing for, like, whether or not I believe in a violent revolution, I think a revolution down the line is more or less inevitable. Not for our side, though. It's for somebody's side. At some point, the antagonisms of capitalism are going to compel people to engage violently. Whether or not that revolution becomes fascist or socialist is going to be up to which ideology is more popular. Right now, we're losing. So that's why I advocate for socialist policies. Ideally, everything could be done democratically, but something tells me that the business owners are not going to be so keen on those policies. But do you not think there are other things that aren't purely about money that people might revolt over? Uh, totally, yeah. I mean, I'm not just like a, a class reductionist. I talk about social issues all the time. Like trans rights. I love that shit, you know? Other big yeah, social issues. People aren't going to revolt over trans rights, though. People are going to revolt about immigration, aren't they? The trans rights movement literally began with a riot, but yeah, immigration is also a big yeah, topic. You're not, you're not going to get a, a society-wide revolt over trans rights. Eh, we'll see. We're getting, we're getting your kids. Eventually, we're all going to be trans. At that point, any revolution oh, yeah. will be a trans revolution. Okay. Um, okay. I'll, is this I'll forced trans? Up. Am I involved in this? No! Everyone Compelled would volunteer transition. to be trans, obviously. God. Okay. So but paranoid. Do you, not think, uh, do you not think that immigration poses a serious concern for American workers? Um, I think that immigration, and by I think, I mean, I think this has been pretty borne out in data. Um, immigration hurts a small percentage of the workforce, but it benefits our economy overall. Um, the globalist economic policies tend to make developed countries such as our own much wealthier. I would look to find economic policies which can compensate those which have been hurt by these policies with the wealth, the much greater amount of wealth that we've drawn from its successes. What what uh, segment of the population is it that suffer from immigration? Um, it's mostly um, blue collar jobs. Obviously, I mean Rust Belt stuff is pretty obvious. I assume with immigration, you're also referring to um, the outsourcing of jobs because those two tend to work together in a in a, a neoliberal yeah economic climate. E even even if jobs weren't outsourced, let's just assume it's just immigration. Uh, don't don't they strike you as the sort of people that Marxists should usually advocate for? Workers of the world unite. A worker in Mexico has more in common with me, an American, well, I'm not a worker anymore, um, than either of us do with a Mexican or American businessman. Um, whether or not our economic policies benefit Americans, benefit Mexicans, benefit Chinese, they're all workers. I respect what, their what rights I mean, regardless. What I mean is, is do, do you not think that Marxists should not advocate for uh, lower immigration? Um, I don't think so. No, I don't think that the two are antithetical at all. Isolationism can have some pretty devastating economic and social consequences. I, I didn't recommend isolationism. I just recommend comparative levels of isolationism. Sorry. Well, I'm not. I'm not going to. I'm not going to characterize it as isolationism. But you agree with me that mass immigration has a negative effect on the wages of blue collar workers and a positive effect workers... on many other people. And we can redistribute those okay. gains ideally. Yeah, but why would we allow a situation where these people were being hurt in the first place? Because they're being hurt and helping other people more than they are being hurt, and we can use I that help to fix their hurt. Yeah, but why hurt them in the first place? This, this would be like this, this would help. be like this would be like if I'm me and my girlfriend are next to each other, and someone proposes to take five dollars from me, but give her fifty dollars, and then yeah. she agrees to it, and I say, "Well, no, fuck you, I don't want to lose five. and she says, "I can just break you off a tenor, dude." And then I argue yeah, against it anyway. Do you really trust the capitalists to do that? Um, I mean, you know who fights harder than anyone else for the rights of um, lower income workers? Go on. It's, oh, it's, I mean, it's, it's us. Historically, it's been union leaders, anarchists, and socialists who have fought tirelessly for the, uh, for the low income workers. Um, but you're now fighting against them. No, no, we're fighting for them with policies that are meant to help them. In one specific instance, I don't we, think they think that, though. I'm not particularly concerned with what they think. They can make arguments if they want. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, I'm sorry. There, wait, there, wait. There are, okay, wait, do you okay, wait, 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 do you believe do you believe in Id poll? Wait, are you an are you an Id poll man? Why should I just let accept make, a person's argument because of their identity? I, 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 I agree. I don't think a Marxist should accept the argument from the working men of the world. No, just no, 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 no. The working men of the world. Well, uh, wait, I said I, they me, should make me, an argument. If they have no, an well, argument, let me make the argument. Let me make the argument. Well, you're mischaracterizing. Uh, I just want to clear up really quickly. I don't care if they don't like it because they feel like they don't like it. If there are arguments they can make as to why it's down, there yeah. are downsides and it's not beneficial to them. I will always listen to those. I don't care what they okay, just the, feel. The, 
th there are lots of downsides, but speaking from the purely economic one, um, a study by the Bank of England uh, found that a 10% rise in immigration leads to a 2% reduction in wages. Why should they accept any reduction in wages? Uh, we've already gone over this. The total economic gains are overall better for them. Even if the wages go down, that, even if even if the wages are go down, this leads to a lower cost of commodities. This leads to a greater economic output. This means there's more money to go into our social programs, which could be brought back into them. I thought the problem was that the money was being pulled at the top. Yes, and we can pull that money away so from it's them. Not. Yeah, but you can't. What? What? You're not in control. You haven't even managed to get the businesses to stop lobbying the government. What does this have to do with anything? Yeah, we yeah, I advocate for my political goals, as do you. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, as an immediate and concrete present policy position right in our face, we could advocate for lower immigrations, and that would help working men of the United no, States. No, it wouldn't. Yes, it would. No, it wouldn't. It would mean yes, less would. less tax money, less money into our social systems. It would mean a higher cost of our commodities, which they would have to pay for. It would mean to economically devastating outcomes for everyone in our society, worst of all them, because they have the least money they can use to weather those problems. I disagree. This is there I are so wait, wait, really quickly. I, I, there I are don't so agree many. With that so there, it doesn't matter whether you agree with it. This has been this immigration help society at large thing has been borne out by literally every economic center in America. The I Heritage Foundation. Every. I'm sorry. It, it might help the GDP, but that's not what I'm talking about. I agree. Right now, the problem is not with the wealth; it's with distribution. Why don't? If you're so concerned about the rights of lower workers, why not push for politicians and economic policies that will help them out directly, like universal health care, or with um, wealth redistribution, or with um, universal I don't think basic that's income? The solution. Okay. I think the solution is so you so you care so you what? care about let him, let him, you care about the wealth. I didn't finish. You care about the well-being of the um, of the underclass when it comes to restricting yeah. immigration, but you don't care about the well-being of the underclass when it comes to dealing with the um, the uh, negative externalities of capitalism. Sargon, how about I finish my point? I yeah. think that when you introduce uh, low-value labor to compete with theirs, then you are deliberately attacking the value of their own labor, and I think that in and of itself is an entirely negative thing. I think they become resentful of it, and I don't think they appreciate it, and I don't think it helps them. And I think that some like abstract promise that we're going to redistribute quote unquote whatever wealth it's not the abstract the, the, the billionaires managed to siphon off from them is not an acceptable answer it's not abstract we already have lower commodity costs due to them there are already more money being put into our social welfare programs because of them our economy as a whole is stronger which benefits us in regards to investments okay, okay, and tax okay, okay pause pause right but the these things will forever be catching up to the people who have just come in no they won't Yes, they will. No, they won't. Evidence it's that I've seen. I'm terribly sorry. Way. I'm terribly sorry if you've seen something different from what I have seen. The impact that this has you on the income of lower level laborers logical... is incredibly minor. Incredibly minor. And this is one I of the things. Care. Really quickly, I want. Well, hold on. So you don't care about all of the benefits, but you care about this incredibly tiny downside that we can be compensated I, by other I care benefits. About the no, no, no. That you're this, yourself, this is right? this is the issue. Wait, wait, hold on. Because it's my turn now. This is the issue I really, have. This is have why I hate the the how do you call it the um, the sociopathy of of the of anti immigration. You don't actually care about the well being of these people. You advocate. Do I not? Hold on. You advocate against policies that help them. You advocate you against the left. You advocate against socialist policies. You advocate against an expansion of welfare programs. You advocate against the redistribution of wealth. The only time you seem to care about the concerns of these people is in an incredibly niche situation that pans out to their betterment in the long run that ever so conveniently allows you to keep the brown people out of the country. Now, I'm not accusing you of being racist right now. I'm telling you, however, Just go, that it's very, it. it's very it. convenient to me Go that you it. claim to care so deeply about these people that in every other economic sense you overlook in every conceivable way but now now when there's a wedge issue that you can use to drive between the left and immigrants right. you use that as an opportunity to pretend to care about these okay, people how, how that's just it's very strange for me okay, Bosh, okay you gotta let him respond Bosh. oh i would be i, I, I would be delighted to hear a well, response you'd have to shut up first I don't care whether you think I am a racist or not. Right? I You're never conscious. said you were a racist. I, hey, let Bosh, him respond, Bosh. Bosh. Let him respond. Maybe he should respond you, to the point I made. I even clarified I didn't call him a racist. You accused him Bosh. quite a bit. Let him respond. Right? You naturally conflate immigrant with brown person. That's your pathology, not mine. Jumping In right to country, the race, even okay. though I clarified let, I wasn't let him, talking let him about respond, race. Bosh. Bosh. Let him respond. 
in in my country the problem is actually european immigrants the polish millions of them come over they're the ones who are competing with the low blue collar working men who are there finding themselves struggling for jobs the fact that you as a marxist think it's acceptable to hate, hurt their economic prospects in order to somehow and in a it very helps them way uh, let him respond Bosch. Bosch. in a very firm way uh, suggest that they will be helped further on down the line i think is uh, optimistic and you are completely ignoring the fact that large-scale immigration puts a pressure on public services that will never ever be caught up to now you can talk Bosch. i like i like how i even specifically clarified i wasn't accusing him of being racist and that's what he decided to get offended no, by. i don't care whether you think that is and I'm then why did you it. respond to it all right no he that's okay don't worry about it. it it's okay okay i'm sorry for upsetting you now he, hold he on a, really quickly about a, okay, a pay Bosch. cut so, so right so all of the evidence that i have seen indicates that immigration hurts native workers to an extremely minor degree but the overall economic output provided by them is much higher you used to pretend to be a okay. um okay. Whoa, 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 whoa. Stop, no 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 you, no, you just went on to me it doesn't i don't care what you think i pretend to be right let's stop on that point wait wait wait, should, wait hey yo Mars, i was midpoint there of, why hey, whoa, 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 Carl, really quickly, income. really quickly. I understand Carl, let, you let know this because you second. used to pretend to be a, um, nope. you used to pretend to be point. a classical Finish liberal. Finish your point, Vosh. Don't, don't sneak a jab in here. Finish your point. My apologies. No, no, he, let, let him sneak the jabs. They reflect badly on him, not on me. So he, you, he, you, he you used to pretend to be a classical liberal. One of the concepts behind classical liberalism is the idea of maximizing economic output through the free exchange of goods and labor across borders. That's a pretty classic adherent to classical liberalism. It's pretty, I would say it's a, it's the piece of resistance. It's like uh it's the, it's the main meal. It's the beef inside the, the beef Wellington. So for you to then turn around I'm sorry, well, you're an on, English Bush. liberal hang now. On, and for you to then on, turn around on. and argue against but the plurality right. of economic evidence, right. which suggests that there are overall economic benefits to immigration, to fucking cry in front of me and make this 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 appeal, this emotive argument okay. in favor of groups of people who are statistically helped right. more by immigration than others right. is ridiculous to me. I apologize right. if I get I apologize if I get worked up over it. It's just I actually care about the working class and I don't use Use them as a cheap cynical ploy to get by with policies class, but you want their wages to go down Why except they just, don't so well, they i actually like, care about the working do. class um and for that, reason, for that reason for that reason really quickly i have i have a quick question i have a quick jobs. question then i'm done adam no, okay. you have do you, you, adam, did you point, adam gosh. did you come into this discussion with an intent uh, to appear like a neutral moderator or were you comfortable coming off bias from the beginning you're you're interrupting far more than Sargon is, okay? I'm just trying to let both of you speak. I came into this conversation saying in the very beginning that my ultimate goal was to make sure that you both had a chance to make your opinions, okay? I, I want to hear your opinion, Vosh. I honestly do. But you keep interrupting Sargon more than Sargon is interrupting you. Sargon did just interrupt you, and I said, you know, let me let you finish your point. Do you have a question for Sargon? Well, no, I'd like to respond to his point, actually. I what find point that did I make that you're going to respond to? Tell me what the point that you're going to uh, respond to specifically. Just so you don't ramble meaninglessly Why about something irrelevant. Up, then? Wait, you wait, up, wait, wait, what point? Wait, do you know? You just want to talk, don't you? You don't actually have a point to respond to. What point? We're Adam, talking we gonna, about, we're talking we about immigration versus... What versus point, Carl? Cut. Let, let, <laughs> so, I can tell Vosh, you when you shut Vosh, up. Vosh, let, let's, let's talk on respond, okay? Right. Please, please I, don't interrupt, and I won't have to interrupt you. I'll ask him what point if he doesn't tell me what point he's responding to. Vosh, I'm going to say something, and I don't care whether you like it or not. And if you, do, if point, you don't Carl? feel, if you don't feel like I've responded to it, then afterwards, after I finish talking, you can ask whatever question you like. Is yeah, that yeah, fair ask deal? another question. That's how it works. It's good. It's like a back and forth right. thing. Go ahead. Uh, right. uh, there, there's no question that mass immigration damages the economic prospects of working class people. And I'm sure that there it is. would do if it was... <laughs> Gosh, this is why... Of course, there's not. There's, there's not, mate. Look, I mean, just just, just have... He never gave me a point that he was responding to. I don't know what Gosh. he's going on about. It sounds irrelevant. Gosh, you, but you're you're impugning me for not being You know being what subject we're discussing. You're the one that keeps interrupting Oh, no, me. I just... What bothers me is that when I came here to discuss ideas and he wants to performatively jerk he's, himself off... He's, his words are putting ideas out there for you to respond to. Big but brain ideas. I am finish. overwhelmed by their uh, 
by their legitimacy. Are you are you a Trump fan? Because I see uh, it seems like Trump was doing this a lot in the debates. Bosh. I'm seeing a little similarity here. OK, listen, I'm a multiculturalist. I take from every culture I think has valuable, um, input, okay, well, including Trump, the Trumpian idea. I don't want to I don't want to mute you just because I think for, for real, real, though. I do just want to clarify let, if, let's, no, what let's, point let's, Sargon has the floor now. Let Sargon make his point. OK, so uh, Sargon, please. Uh, am I am I allowed to make the point, Vosh? Good. Um, the the point, Vosh, is you, you're just wrong about suggesting that mass immigration helps the economic prospects of working class people. It doesn't. Right? It hurts it. And what's more, like I was saying, it hurts the access to social services and the the long term viability of these social services. Uh, this is something we can see in my country uh, manifestly. It's so patently obvious, and yet we're in such a politically correct environment, no one can mention it. Uh, the NHS is constantly struggling. The schools are constantly struggling. We're constantly running out of housing space. We constantly need more houses built. This is demonstrably uncompetitive for the working class people. And I'm quite shocked that a Marxist would turn around and say, no, it's okay for their, their, their wages and their prospects to be hurt because I have a concern about the GDP. I find that really quite staggering. Um, I don't see why, and that, that's just the economic argument as well. There are loads of social and cultural arguments for against mass immigration as well, um, which I'm happy to go into if you'd like to talk to them, uh, talk about them. But uh, I'm sure you'd like to respond. So go ahead. So your source for this is a quote from Boris Johnson. No. Read it again. I'm reading it again. Read it again. I'm I'm currently reading it. Is this well, a, read is it this out word for word? The Bank of the... England. This is the conclusion. So this is for England again. Are you? It's not Boris Johnson, is it? It's the Bank of England. Yes, it's an assessment of a claim made by Boris Johnson. The yes. Bank of England found a 10% increase in the proportion of foreign-born workers in yes. lower-paid service jobs was associated with a near 2% fall in average pay for those jobs when focusing on particular regions. So in particular yes. regions, in England specifically, referring yes. only to lower-paid service jobs, there is a near... 2% fall in average pay. Fascinating. Yes, you think, as a Marxist, so, you'd so, be concerned yeah, so about we, that? So when we examine a specific sub-demographic of the lowest earners, yes, we do in fact find, remember the original claim you made? Does a 10% rise in immigration lead to a 2% reduction in wages? No, yeah. that was inaccurate. Yes. It's a 2%, yes. near 2% fall in average pay for a specific subsector of certain jobs with certain types of immigrants. Poor so people. you were actually Poor hitting people. me up with the Boris Johnson argument. But Hey, Adam, Adam, look who's interrupting me while I'm responding to his point, directly responding to the link that he provided me. So even in the link that you provided me, you horrendously mischaracterized this, indicating (laughs) the only thing that you have to provide to support your argument is the idea that for an incredibly small economic subsect of the population of the United Kingdom, they hit with a near 2% fall in average pay for a 10% increase in immigration. What an unbelievably minute statistic. In Bush. fact, it now even says right here, even here in, in the, oh, what's that? Now, interrupting? If you engage your brain. Interrupting when I'm trying to make a point that directly Carl, addresses the article you gave means, me? Bush. Let the cogs turn. Carl, just Carl, I, Carl, I know you're upset right now. Oh, Carl, you probably shouldn't have linked the article because it makes you look a lot no one, stupider than no I would have one, assumed no you were otherwise. No one is upset here. Okay. So even here in this article, it says this is a relatively small effect. So this is, let's go over again, a contrary to what you said. An incredibly small and specific reduction in wages to a small portion of the population. This has nothing to do with broader well, economic outcomes, broader increase in wages. Correctly. Yeah, we can go over it some more. So here's Rush, here's Rush, an article. Whoa, whoa. So here's an article from the Heritage Foundation. Does current immigration economically benefit ordinary U.S. citizens? I wouldn't read it if I were you. It might trigger you a little bit, okay? But I'm going to provide it to you I'm anyway. I'm not talking about ordinary U.S. citizens. Because oh, you're right. US you're not talking about ordinary U.S. citizens. Well, that's the problem. Economic benefits to the general population the end up class. trickling down to the lower class. This isn't a now business owner. No, because this isn't a business owner business worker relationship. This is a but general you, economic output. You, Vosh, are you going to let the general respond? principle? 
Well, I can't move on because he actually directly no, no, provided me a your, link that was that was dissonant to the point he was trying to make. To understand. You've made your there's point. Something here the voice Whoa, wait, 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 wait. Hold on really quickly. Hold on really quickly, okay? So just you to have. clarify, just to clarify, I'm going to provide you, if you want, I can keep giving you links because if I Google effect of immigration on economy, I will only get positives because this is one of the most well-researched, wow. well-studied pieces of information available. It's all propagandized by all these massive economic institutions institutes that are all just trying to uh, the trigger, trigger the right-wing propaganda now. Yeah, and even the right-wingers can see that immigration is better for the economy. <laughs> Why would, they, why would the they say that? Well, because, because in a political Fuck sense, right-leaning people have been the ones advocating against immigration, like Carl Gahn over here no, is, for decades. It's no, all haven't. propaganda. That's, that's Conspiracy wrong. Carl. All of these massively <laughs> well-studied research papers, they're all propaganda. Bullshit. Can I, can I from different sides about? of the political aisle, from different organizations, they're all conspiring to get him. Gosh. Let's, uh, let's, let's we can move to another topic. I feel like I'm adequately no, demonstrating I'm, I'm, my I'm, point on this one. I really want to nail this point home, Vosh. Yeah. Feel you're free. Not thinking about it. I'm not thinking enough he, about it. Help me. Elucidate. You're not thinking at all about it. Elucidate for me. You're, I would love to. You are engaging your mouth before engaging your brain. Can you talk right? under pressure? Because you never respond to points when I'm responding what? to can yours. You, can you not talk under pressure? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> can I not? I wouldn't know. Well, I keep getting can, interrupted. You, like you keep interrupting here. Like I agree. Sargon has interrupted you. The only reason why I'm not forcing forcing it with Sargon is because you're interrupting 90% of the time, Wash. You are. Like he can't even get a minute worth of conversation. A minute worth of posturing. Let, yes, I agree. I do respond. interrupt him in that Just quite a bit. Let him respond. We do want to hear from you, Vosh. Let him respond. Right. Vosh. The the reason that it was in a specific sort particular sections of the economy is because of the kind of immigrants that we had over. If we'd had a, a, a an immigrant body that had come into the country that was generally reflective of all of the levels of society, then that that percentage would probably have been lower and would have been spread across all of society. But instead, we got very, very um, uh, Polish and Romanian and Lithuanian workers who are prepared to work in manual labor for lower prices than British people. This is why it's in certain sectors, because they are the bulk of the workers that have come over. There is no question that when you increase the supply of labor, the value of that labor goes down. That's an incontrovertible truth. You can't get around that. And so I'm quite amazed that you think it's okay for us to victimize the earning potential of the lowest strata of our society for the majority, which is the middle class. That seems wildly exploitative to me. And I'm, I'm not surprised I didn't say middle they class. are voting. A... You don't get a choice, though. Most of your society is middle class. No, by the definition of that particular poll, sure. If we're talking about the middle class yes, there, then yes, you. the middle yes. class they, they and the lower class, class yes. too. And I can, by the way, the, the really quickly. The lower class are the ones who doing the. Wait, wait really quickly. Pool. I think there's let's, a funny hypocrisy. Wait, wait, finish. Really let's quick. Finish. Oh, is he finished? Wait, make sure. Make sure. No, Star I'm not finished. finished. Oh, shit. oh, feel free. <laughs> I know. I caught you one but, quarter of the way through. My apologies. Yes, you did. This is, this is the problem, though. And you don't see any problem with a Marxist saying, no, it's okay for those people to have falling wages in order to, what, realize the utopia, essentially. Uh, I, think that's tr I think that's terrible. I think that's absolutely awful. I think it's morally deficient that anyone would offset, like, export the, the, the falling wages and costs of their dream to the, 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 most po the poorest and most vulnerable in society uh, for the benefit of the middle class in the, in the hope that that money trickles down to them eventually. I just don't see why we would bring in the people. Why bring in, why Why have immigration? So several points here. Okay, quick one. For one, I think it's really funny to me that earlier you were posturing about Marx being wrong because totally, in a total sense, the general economic prosperity of this country has gone up over time when the reason why it's gone up are for precisely the same reasons that an increase in immigration would lead to an increase in the living standards of even the poorest Americans. Because it's in the case of our economy, a rising tide actually does um, uh, um, uh, push all ships upward. It does float 
all the boats. It's funny to me because there's are two actually incompatible positions. Earlier, you jerked yourself raw about how the general economic prosperity of the country has gone up. The reason why it's gone up is because of precisely those same immigration policies, those same neoliberal trade policies that have then subsequently led to an increase in the general standard of living for the people in this country. The same policies that you are currently opposing. For two, I think it's funny that you would care, uh, pretend to care, I apologize, about the well-being of the working class when, and again, just to clear it out, I'm not a nationalist. I don't give a fuck whether or not a person in the working class is British or Lithuanian or Polish. They're human beings, and I believe they should be treated with at least a modicum of respect more than what you're offering here. So, no, I know it's funny to you, the idea of caring about people, but that's because for you it's a facade, but for I, I actually care about this shit. So, for three... Oh, 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 for three... For three, I would like... For three, I would like to remind everyone that when his initial claim was a 2% reduction in overall wages. The actual claim is that for an incredibly specific subset of the pot, yes, a particular specific low wage service. Only are you are you going to actually let me it's finish? Per sector. No, uh, let, let him finish. I just explained well, it to you, Carl, man. Carl, Sargon. Carl, you're not I acting very to. civil, Carl. Sargon, oh. I have to. I'm, I have to. So, uh, to, so, to, so to clarify, I have a plurality of evidence indicating that the economy benefits in general from immigration. You have a single link indicating, well, you, as, as your own argument demonstrates earlier, my good friend, an increase in the, GD, in the GDP over the past century and a half has led to a general increase in the prosperity of everyone in this country. That's what you were saying when you were saying Marx was wrong, that everyone's, ev every proletariat's general level of wealth would fall. By your own definition as used earlier, you must concede that a general increase in the economic prosperity of this country helps the poor as well. You made that argument earlier. You can't yes, not I'm make not it now. Additionally, I would like to point out the fact doesn't. that the Sargon, tiny, tiny it. subset of the population, which would be hit with a, even in the article, it is said to be a minute change in their overall wages following a substantial change in the total number of immigrants coming in when juxtaposed against the plurality of evidence indicating that immigration overall helps the economy, including the poor, in addition to the fact that that when talking about the already, admittedly, incredibly small, incredibly tiny, incredibly minute impact on a very small portion of the population, Carl's solution isn't to engage in wealth reappropriation or any kind of socialist <laughs> policy or anything that might actually help these people or of anything, unionization, anything that's been actually shown to help these people historically, anything that's actually advocated for workers' rights over the past few centuries. His advocacy is to engage in a reduction in immigration. So when okay, he sees yes. a problem problem, a tiny 100. little problem that actually ends up Stop. benefiting the entire country. His solution is not actually to help those people with humane policies that effectively redistribute wealth. His approach is to keep people from coming in. Because to him, yes. humanity and charity to the poor is infinitely less important than anything that allows him to fake caring about those people to posture about immigration. And he well, laughs over here, Carl over boss, here, boss, who boss, loss, 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 practicing loss, 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 loss,
it doesn't contradict what I've been saying about like technology and the distribution of wealth under capitalism. I'm actually advocating for a more equitable distribution of wealth under capitalism because what I'm arguing for is actually a, a seller's market for laborers, whereas you're advocating for a buyer's market for laborers. There's a reason that Bernie Sanders called Open Borders a Koch brothers idea because it bloody well is. It's just this wild ideological idea of the idea that the nation state and borders should cease to exist that communists have that mean that they can sit there and advocate for the lower wages of workers in their own country at the, at the, at the benefit of the actual billionaire class who also want that. I mean, doesn't it bother you? You are on side with an, uh, with a, an actual policy that actually affects the wages of workers alongside places like Goldman Sachs. They agree with you. They agree. Open those borders. Get that slave labor in. They're going to make loads of money, and eventually it'll trickle down. Uh, absurd. It's an absurd contradiction, and it definitely shows that you do not care about the working man. Bosh, you want to respond? Oh, no, there's nothing to. If he doesn't care about data, there's no point. I might as well be arguing with a homeless man off the street. I will make this point, though. The only time I... <laughs> The only time I ever hear the argument... Is there a valid person to argue with, Vosh? The only... I mean, if they're crazy, probably not, no. The only time well, I ever hear that argument... Heh, you believe in open capitalism. borders, just like the Koch brothers. Um, the only time I ever actually hear that is from Nosbols, from Strasserites. Um, Maybe they've got a point. I don't... Well, I imagine you would think that, Why my friend. Why do you agree with Goldman Sachs on the case of immigration? I agree with Goldman Sachs Why that the you... sky is blue as well. Wait, have, are you really going to go for this Why? bad faith Why posturing right now? Want... Why do you want the? Why American do you agree with government? Nazis on immigration, Sargon? Why are what Nazis are really keen Nazi on your immigration, immigration policies? policies. Nazis immigration don't want policies? immigration, my friend. We agree. Don't we they? agreed. No N word. No N word. I, I don't know. I mean, I, it's weird. He's making Nazi arguments to me. If he's unironically going to make the Goldman Sachs argument to me, then why is it that people of unironically like Nazis we're, openly advocate for these exact we're, policies? Why is it that conservative why, um, why uh, political parties the always get the Nazi into vote into a into a buyer's market? See, this is the thing. I, I the discussion, at least on this point in particular, is. And as far as I'm concerned, over. Um, he's not willing to engage with any of the data on the subject. Um, I will say this, though. It is amusing to you me. You should have sent me it in advance if you'd wanted me to engage with some data before the debate. You we are, we are, have been you doing have sent me online advance. advocacy. Sargon, we know, Sargon, we know perfectly now, well that even if I had linked it to you, you wouldn't have read it anyway. Oh, we, do we know? Okay. We will, we will, I will say, I will say this, though. Just good, really quickly, it's very funny to me faith. that you make the, why are you agreeing with Koch and Sachs, uh, Goldman Sachs argument to me, when um, uh, um, uh, 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 Richard Spencer and Nick Fuentes, both avowed neo-Nazis, have both said that while they disagree with you on a variety of things, you are good entry points to the alt-right. So when it comes right. to so associations with sources? others who share our ideological predilections, it's very strange to me that you would decide to go down that line. Just I, tread I carefully with that. I don't care who that. you associate me with, though. Let, oh, let okay, then I don't care who point. you associate with me. Yeah, but I would have thought that you would care. Wait, 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 wait. So wait, wait, wait. You're saying you're part. saying it's less likely for me to agree with a business person as to what is economically best for America than it is for you to agree with a Nazi? Are you admitting that you have some predilections here? You, I just think it's respond. bizarre that you agree that they should be in a seller a buyer's market. I, I do, not only do I not know what you mean by that, I'm very sure you don't know what you mean by that either. I've I've explained it already, and anyone listening knows. Yes, I know. I'm Increasing the labor's that. pool means you're fucking over domestic workers. I know. I've heard all of the propaganda, my dude. Even though all the it data drives, contradicts drives, it, drives wages down. If there's, if it actually doesn't. Study. There has been I, that's study what, after study, study. I linked you. Showed you that. You course. linked me a single piece that shows a two percent reduction in wages for a small and already impoverished portion of the population. That's we will, the problem, Vosh. Damn, I found you, you and I saw, it goes down. I saw That's on the news today, I saw on the news today that there was a stabbing, a white man stabbed a black woman. What We have to deal with this problem, white violence in inner cities. We have to deal with white knife attacks. When you, I'm sorry, and I don't accept, have, when, it to, when, it class. when it comes to extrapolating, when it comes to extrapolating data, from existing evidence, you have one tiny data point. I have plurality of evidence on the subject. This is this Their is wage is very... going down as the problem, Bosch. I have a question. Do you love black people? No. Why not? We, Are you in a fallen we're... state? I don't I don't love white people either, if that's what you're wondering. Damn. Answer the question. Why don't you like black people? I didn't say I did dislike black yeah, you, people. You you asked him if he loved them. No, I asked him if he hated them and he said He's yes. He's doing a Jesse Lee Peterson impression. No, he he you, you asked That's actually you not what you asked, Bosch. I never said that. 
if it, if it well, helps, I don't love or hate arbitrary groups of people. I don't. Yes. I, 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 Except immigrants. With, you have pretty strong opinions on that. I have strong opinions about what we should do to the labor market. Right. Not improve it. That doesn't improve it. You wanted to well, stack. You want to. You want to pretend to care about the lowest echelons of society to allow it to stagnate if it means you get to let let, let less brown people in. I think that everything you say is prediction, uh, projection. To be honest, really. I, I. I mean, you're literally here going, "Fuck this two percent lower class. Who cares? It's a barely anything." It's like, dude, to those people, that's a big deal. Yeah, and then it's a, then it's a good down. thing they benefit from the economy as a whole going up. Then, then yeah, good thing I actually care yeah, about them. They they personally have less money to spend. That's uh, not well, yes, and commodity prices go down to compensate for that. The overall economy gets better. Depends. It, wait, wait, wait it, I'm it sorry. Depends. Does an increase in right. GDP improve the economy or not? I don't know. I don't really care about the GDP. Wait, you don't care about the economy? I don't care about the GDP. Do the GDP is a pretty strong indicator of economic success. So do you care about the economy no, or not? Not really. That's the problem. That's now that's exactly the problem, right? The GDP tells you nothing about the distribution of wages. No, it doesn't, but it tells you about the economy. Yeah, but it doesn't tell you about the distribution. Of wages. I'm not talking about general economy. distribution. I'm talking about the economy. Do you care about the make, economy? Make, make no, your I argument care about let... the distribution of wealth. Okay, so you don't care about the economy. No, I care about the distribution of the wealth. I okay. care about where it is. And you're sat there going, look, the people at the bottom, we can make their labor value less. No, we can improve them. The them. People above... no, let, let them respond, Vos. Vos, you, you literally just said it doesn't matter if they if they suffer a 2%. Because they benefit, yes. In... <laughs> Vos. I, I Vos. don't think they agree, and I don't agree. right? And I don't know the data you're talking about because you haven't sent it to me. And if you have, I haven't had time to look at it, which you must be able to accept. I sent so it. So I guess well, I Is guess it? I guess you can just keep asserting it, but you're not proving it. And I suppose that if that's the case, then we can move on to oh, I don't know. Um, let's let's say what are the cultural problems of immigration? I think that'd be an interesting. Thing. Sure. Are we're, we going to talk we're, about we're America at, or we're break over two land. hours now? So you guys, we're, we can do either here, one. We're here all day. Like we can go as long as you guys want. Well, I will go, say this. I just to cap it off. I mean, I think allegorically, this reminds me. Like, imagine if, uh, imagine if somebody was like drinking water too quickly and they like drowned in the water, like they choked on it or went in their lungs or something. And Carl gone over here goes in a big soliloquy publicly about how we need to restrict water to the population. And when I point out that water is generally better for the population and could in fact be made better for everyone with proper precautions. He keeps pointing at the one person who choked to death on the water. Um, it's does pretty extraordinary to me, matter? but it's it's but it's this is this is but just matter? just classic classically though. Um, this is always how liars have interpreted data. When liars, usually, whoa, well, well, Carl, 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 Bosh, Bosh, Bosh. Bosh is a guy cool drowning there, the man. I think wait, wait, wait. Are you telling me to stop when he interrupted me? Well, I, I'm just saying I mean, we're tra traveling the same ground over. Well, then over I can day. finish it, and this will be literally the last thing I have to say on it, which is this simply. This is always how liars have engaged with data. Typically, for massive things like the economy, the way you make decisions is by assessing the plurality of data made on it. You usually do meta-analyses, dozens of data, tons of studies from many different actors trying to come together and form a consensus, because these things are very complicated and need a, well, they, it takes a lot to go into them. And what people can do is they can focus on one particular piece of data that doesn't represent the whole and may even be disproved in other elements of the meta-analyses. And by focusing on that, they can derive any agenda they want from it. They can derive anything. Okay. Well, I, I definitely have a reducing immigration agenda. Well, Bosh, can I ask you one question before? I, it sounds like you might be ready to go. I mean, well, we, we can go as long as you want, but I, I'm curious about something. Yeah, hit me up. Well, I just, your opening argument seemed to be that the the spoils of the economy disproportionately went to the wealthy but at the same time you're making the argument that a better economy is is good for everyone so the, that argument seems contradictory it's not a better economy is better for everyone it's disproportionately better for the wealthy if i wanted to address the needs of the lower class the way in which i would choose to do it are through policies that actually make the world better taking wealth away from those who don't need it and distributing Ste it to those again. who do theft Sure. Same same way we stole from the landowners when we had our when we had our revolution and had democracies. Yes, I don't think there's anything intrinsically wrong with forming a more ethical distribution of wealth. You're the one who just claimed you care about the distribution of wealth. The the, the process. No, 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 
Oh, I wasn't done with Adam's question. Don't be rude. He wants to hear the answer. So you like wealth distribution. You claimed you care about the distribution of wealth. I do as well. We're obviously both interested in it. So my way of dealing with these problems would be to try and find an ethical way of redistributing wealth within our society, something that's functional, that works well, rather than keeping people from entering our country, which has been shown to increase the overall economic strength of our country. Notice, by the way, that Carl literally just said he doesn't care about the economy. He cares about economic distribution. And now he's saying it's theft to ever redistribute wealth away well, from the I, I wealthy. I thought you both no, cared about that, though. You, you are arguing to Evidently, one of us does. You're just arguing to take their stuff. If So so tax laws are theft. Well, I mean, if you were... Shut the fuck up, Carl. This is the just, laziest hey, fucking wait, faux wait, libertarian wait, argument wait, I've ever heard. How about I actually Bosh. finish what I'm about to say? If, if you, say, put 100% tax on... Say, Never said that. Um, I, did I say what? you did? <laughs> You said if you let, said let him, let him let him finish, Bosh. No, Go ahead. if you Sorry. were to put say a hundred percent tax on say inheritance, then yeah, you, I think that's fair to characterize that as theft because that's already money that's had taxes paid on it. So yeah, I would say that that's a fair way of characterizing that as a form of theft. But what? So I mean, what, what's what your is, plan? Is your wait, plan it's just theft to, take to their tax money, money that has been taxed wait, at a hundred percent? Yes, you're characterizing his position. I'm not. No, I'm not mischaracterizing his position. A hundred percent tax percentage. remains a tax. Why are we talking about inheritance tax or one hundred percent taxes? I never mentioned any. Because of Because I'm using it as an example. Can you try yeah, and keep an argument? Up? Example of what? An argument example I don't make. Of how taxation could be theft? What oh, is wrong what? with you? Do you forget okay, your own so sentence? so so any time taxes are implemented, it's theft. Can you answer that? No. Yes, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> wait, wait. Can you answer Gosh. that? Yes, no. No. Gosh, steel man. Oh, wait, steel wait, wait, man is. Steel man is argument for he didn't, us. Clock. He didn't He's make an, an argument. He here. didn't. He actually didn't. He was responding to an argument that I made. Oh God! So wait, wait, so wait, wait, so wait, wait. So Sargon says no. There are ways to tax without it being theft. So there's my answer. It would not well, be theft for us to have tax system. Sure, and some forms of handshake can be assault if you grip hard enough and then break the bone. But I'm obviously sure. not referring to that. I'm referring to types okay. of types of taxation that are fair and equitable. Okay, so what is that? Let's. I don't. I didn't. What in specific tax here. policies? I don't have a. He, he's defining 80%. them as being fair and equitable without explaining. Yeah, wait, wait, wait. So wait, wait, wait. Hold on. So wait. You agree that you can have taxes without it being theft? Correct. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So there is my answer. Without getting into specifics, because I and I will be Whatever forward about this. Whatever those things are, that's what I want. Yeah, the you want you want to need. argue the specific tax tier rates that I think would be best implemented across the board? Sure. Not especially, to be honest. Yeah, I okay. didn't think so. <laughs> okay, so, so no, on <laughs> I think that right <laughs> now simple. we could probably find a way as a country to readjust our tax rates so that people at the bottom get more. You claim to care about wealth distribution, Carl. I care about a lot as well. And that would be a much better way of addressing the issues with immigration than restricting immigration itself. Because the economic benefits to immigration are massive, the downsides are comparatively small, and those small downsides can be compensated for by policies that would help people in other ways too. I don't think declining wages is comparatively small. I think that's fucking catastrophic. 2% for a tiny proportion of the population that's compensated for economically in other departments. All right, it's next. Not, it's not a tiny Where are we going to talk about culture? Population. Well, he did make an argument. Yeah, yeah, sure. Is there, is there any, in, in your mind, is there any concern about mass immigration from a cultural perspective? Uh, yeah, I like, uh, there are certain elements to my culture that I like very much, here in America, at least. Really? What's your name? Um, I don't know. I like democracy and freedom. Obviously, that's an America-specific thing. You don't seem to care about it very much. Um, I'm a pretty huge fan of, for example, um, the the concept of uh, um, workers' rights. Um, I really like, uh, which that's a Western tradition. There's no denying that. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah. Marx was Western, after all. Okay. Um, I like American um, culture. You know what? I like burgers. I'm a big fan of burgers, too. Um, you know like who I don't like? Burgers. I will admit this. I've had a huge problem with an influx of... Um, there's a particular culture that I'm not very fond of that I think has really been fucking up America lately. Um, really? Is it Nazis? Yeah. It's my no 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 because um, you can be a Nazi from any culture. That's just a political predilection. I don't agree. I think that you've got to be a German. <laughs> oh, I disagree, but okay. Um, Nazism is the weaponization of German identity. That okay, I cannot get into the definition of Nazism with you. That's that's because we that's said no n words, guys. Come on, so oh, you're making no, a okay, point. Fine. The particular okay. cultural issue that I have is um, is Alabamians. I have some family in Alabama. Oh my god! Um, the the small town, the rural, like conservative shit. That shit just fucking drives me up the wall. So there are some types of cultures that I have a huge problem with. 
Um, well, I just, I can't stand that. I, I think I want to build a wall. Clitorises. I want to build a wall around those what about, swamps. What about clit chopping ones? What about those ones? Do you have a problem with those? Clit choppy ones? Yeah, like 95% of Somalian girls ha have a clitorectomy. Is that true? Do you have a problem? That yes. sounds horrible. Somali? Well, I tell you, I, yes. Um, I'm going to go out for a quick cigarette. Um, so while you're Googling that... Yeah, I was, be, yeah are you rolling a fatty over there? Sorry. God. No, no, it's a cigarette. It's, 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 it's just tobacco. It's not... You know, well, don't, okay. don't, California, don't, it's legal. Though. Yeah, you wow. But I, I, I just, it, I'm going to go for a cigarette. I won't be long, though. So, That's um, okay. We'll I can answer your question there. before you go. I don't like it. Sure. Right. So, should we have more or less Somali immigration to the U.S.? Well, wait. They're going to be clit shopping if they're over there, right? If they come over here, they might do it less. Well, you'd think so, but they don't. Well, no, they actually do. Um, oh, immigrants, you didn't even it's know been they shown... chopped clips. Wait, 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 wait. Well, but I do know that generally immigrants, uh, immigrants uh, will um, adopt to the uh, culture uh, of the country they come to. Yeah. Wait, yeah, why do you, wait, why do you think yeah. our Muslim population here in America, our three million Muslims, are actually more progressive and most social issues than our domestic Christian population? Because they can't form ethnic enclaves in the same way they do in my country. Oh, I see. So, th okay, then there you go. We just need to keep these Somalis from forming ethnic enclaves. Apparently, the three million Muslims in America don't form ethnic enclaves. If that's the secret, then there we go. Yeah, um, but that means you have to put a limit on the number that you have. I mean, three million Muslims in here is quite a lot. How many Somalis, how many no, Somalian that's, girls that's do we tiny. need in here? That's one percent of your population. I, that's true. But if you like cluster those people, that's a pretty big number of people. How many Somalis no, do we need you, before it becomes a, a massive problem? country? You've got a massive country. Like the, you, you can you can go to like I went to Birmingham the other day, man. And yeah, we we talked it, genuinely. That. I mean, there was a there was a Pakistani actress who came over and said, "Oh, Birmingham's just like being in Pakistan." And man, Pakistan has got some backwards traditions. And I, I mean, like these communities are not exactly overflowing with eagerness to report the uh, malfeasance of the home community being uh, re replicated over here to the authorities. So we don't even know how bad these things are. Well, it looks like the population of Somalia is 15 million. So it seems like mm -hmm. unless a huge, unless a huge percentage of their population wants to come on over, I feel, I feel like we can let a few Somalis in. I'm okay with that. You're Don't smoke a, your think, cigarette, Sargon. We'll work you, on the audio issues. Are you going to okay, bounce, okay. boss? Or are you going to... Uh, I'm here. I'm, I'm, perfect, I'm a professional big boy streamer. I'm here for all sorts of Well, if you want to read some of your super chats, I know you're streaming on that end. I, uh, we can read some of our super chats over here. And your, your mic is just, like, still... I uh, have it as far away from me as I can. I put a pillow on it, man. Where's your... Go, go to yeah, the I can put a condom on. an oven mitt. <laughs> And put the oven mitt on the microphone. I'm here. I'm here for the culture shit when he comes back. I'm here Sitch, for that. Sitch, are you still around? Yeah. What's up? I, I'm, I'm glad chats? that you're here, Adam, because I've been able to just tap out and let you shoulder all the yelling and all the. Well, I, I'm trying. Vosh is like, geez, Vosh, you you're really good at this oratory stuff, but you talk like seven minutes longer than Sargon does. Oh, I mean, I think I mean I think Sargon is a huge piece of shit who postures constantly and Ooh. dishonestly represents everything he says. So usually when I interrupt, it's not because I'm like mad at him; it's because he said something that's factually incorrect, or he's misrepresented my position, you, or though, he's lied about something point. he said previously. You gotta let him. You gotta let him make his argument, though. If yeah. I let him make every argument that he had, this conversation would have no point i am desperately trying to keep us focused on the points that are okay, uh, being okay, made Vosh, okay do you want to you want to if you want to uh read super chats on your end you said you could mute us in the uh, intro so i just i don't know if you want to make use of time there might be some questions for you in our super chats if you want um i'll stick here with you yes uh sitch what do you got uh well <laughs> there are not a lot of questions mostly uh people not very happy uh, in, the, in the super chats, but there are some questions, which is um, uh, who, someone wants to know whose side are you more sympathetic to in the Groper war, Nick's side or Charlie Kirk's side? Me? Yeah, you. I mean, um, uh, Charlie Kirk is a piece of shit, but Nick is a neo-Nazi. Like the answer is simple. Wait, what, which one is it? Well, oh, oh, the non-neo-Nazi, um, Charlie okay. Kirk. But you're asking me to choose between two like different smelling pieces of shit here. I don't really, uh, it's not a strong like emotional Kirk. conviction. So you're basically saying it's difficult for you to say that Charlie Kirk is not as bad as Nick Fuentes. Yeah, because people like Charlie Kirk end up radicalizing the Nazis. Nazis act right. very above it all, like they're the true conservatives. But in reality, most of them six months ago were standard Ben Shapiro, Charlie Kirk, Candace Owens loving conservatives. Um, really, the reason for that is because the policies advocated for people like Ben Shapiro and the policies advocated by neo-Nazis 
or Sargon of Akkad are not functionally that different. They sort of reach the same conclusions, they just do it using different uh, emotive elements. So Sargon of Akkad has his own reasons for it. So right now, Sargon of Akkad is anti-immigration. He's going to start talking about why we need to reduce the Muslim population coming into our country um, because they all chop their little girls' clits off or whatever. I've seen these arguments from Nazis before. They try to talk about how degenerate and barbaric foreign cultures are. Whether or not you're trying to achieve the same ends, functionally the arguments are the same, which is again the reason why Richard Spencer, founder of the term alt-right, Nick Fuentes, one of the most influential neo-Nazis in the West right now, and um, I'm pretty sure one of the Stormfront editors, all said collectively that while they disagree with many of Sargon of Akkad's positions, Sargon of Akkad is a great entry point to neo-Nazism, because you get all the basic premises from him. You get the anti-feminism, you get the fuck SJWs, you get the we need to reduce immigration, you get the some cultures are better than others. All it really takes is a couple of adjustments and bam, you kind of made your way there. So are, are people not allowed to make these kinds of points because it can pass because you think it can lead to the too far to the right and to neo Oh, they shouldn't stuff? make they shouldn't make those points because they're stupid. But also, if they cared about the outcome of their advocacy, because it turns people into Nazis, even if it wasn't turning into people's not uh, wasn't turning people into Nazis, that wouldn't make Sargon any less stupid. It would just mean that his outcome, the outcome of his advocacy, wasn't as bad as it was before. We we made the mistake of letting Vosh talk, and we only got through one super chest. So. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but I'm just gonna start reading him off till Sargon comes back because no, no, I guess it's, it's not. Sorry, oh, I'm okay, I'm gonna say it's not fair Sargon. to have like this one-sided conversation with Sargon's, Sargon's back. Here. You can't hear him, Sitch. Uh, yeah, I see I'm him back. Now. I'm back. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, Vash was saying that you lead people down the road to uh, neo-Nazis. Oh, no N-word. Well, I can say. Yeah, but I'm no, allowed. I have an his opinion is worth nothing. Oh, there we go. Got him. So you want to go to, but, down the cultural route? I'll let you start, Sargon. Yeah, so. yeah. I mean, like, there's there's no doubt that there's been a huge cultural change in towns and cities in the UK where immigration has been concentrated. Uh, is that something we should stop or not? Uh, all immigration? No. I think that, uh, I, I, I uh, mean... Did I say all immigration, though? Well, I, what did you say specifically? Like, towns having their culture changed? <laughs> yes. Okay, I don't know how we can stop a culture from changing. Cultures change all the time. I'm not we saying the culture shouldn't change, but this is very clearly artificial. It's the consequence of having immigrants from other parts of the world come to our towns. In I don't think there's a, I don't know what an artificial culture change is. Los Angeles's culture is born of the many cultures that are there. It changes all the time. It feels Los Angeles to me. I've never like woken up one morning and thought, oh yeah, this was natural Los Angeles cultural change. But then that, that was artificial. And, and so... And so if uh, if Trump was like, right, you know, what? I'm going to encourage uh, Eastern Europeans to come to Los Angeles and they ended up displacing huge amounts of the native population, would that be a problem? Um, whether or not it's a problem has nothing to do with whether or not it's an artificial cultural change. I don't think well, it, it would, would be, be artificial. artificial. I don't think it would be artificial. Would it be a problem? I mean, if people are being displaced, well, then that, yeah. That would be artificial. If it, like, it's not a natural... Uh, natural culture that's evolved in Los Angeles. Well, that's well as, be as millions of Eastern Europeans coming to Los Angeles. As a wise America. Brit Bonger once told me, this term is subjective and therefore useless. So I don't distinguish between. You said that actually. Uh, no, you're the one who said that if think... a term. You were the one who said that if a term is subjective, it's useless and means nothing. I never I'm said the one that. who said that. I, oh, I never said. It, that. Well, we can go over the vod later. Better descriptor than force. Just use the term rapid. Rapid, culture. rapid, sure. Yeah. Hey, Chad, did rapid, he say yeah. that? You can tell me, okay? No, no, I'm saying, why don't you just use that instead? If you, if there's a contention yeah, yeah. about the word forced. Yeah, okay. Well, I don't so, think I said forced. I said artificial. I don't think there's such a thing. But if we want to go with what okay. you mean to be artificial, which I wait, yeah. was it like artificial when feminists started writing games? Art? I, I like, I don't know what you mean by it. I just feel like things change, well, and sometimes up, people like you get. Maybe some people like you just get left behind and then you think the world is changing artificially when in reality things are just moving on. Maybe I can just define it for you. Feel like, free. Because it, it, I'll, I'll, use, I'll use the example of my country because I'm most familiar with that. But um, Britain had much lower levels of immigration up until 1997 when the Labour government took over. Mm -hmm. And then it, something like quadruple, right? It went up to about 300,000 net a year on average. And we've had that for 20 years. And that's not normal. That's not natural. Most of British history. None of it is normal. This. These are all super loaded subjective terms. None of this is normal or Look, natural. Normal it's all just policy. What is common to have come and occurred before? It's not precedented, but that doesn't have anything to do with whether or not something is normal. No, what's normal is just what has commonly occurred before. Okay, sure. So is it normal right now for gay people to get married in the States? No. It's legal. Yeah, good. 
Okay, what well, time scale? In a, for, in a historical perspective, it's not normal, right? Okay. And we, we, we are now at a point where we've had 20 years of mass immigration. We can see the actual changes. Like, there are, there are areas of English culture that actually no longer exist anymore. Like the East End in London used to have a particular kind of culture, and that just doesn't exist anymore. I don't. I, I can't refer to the specifics you're talking about. I just. I don't acknowledge yeah, okay, this like I'll, normal, I'll, yeah. natural. These are super yeah, okay. loaded, if, if, feelsy yeah, words. Okay. Very emotional. Sure. If you want to sure, talk about the are. cultural no, impact of, of immigration, are. if you want to talk about the cultural they're, impact they're, of immigration, I agree this, with you that it can have this a. This is something that's going to have to be a bit feelsy loaded if we're going to talk about culture. Sure. Then let's use very empirical language. Okay. So no, you can't because you're talking about people. We how can, they feel. Okay. That, we can, you can use empirical language to determine whether or not a person feels a certain way. Look, I'm not going to be language policed by you. If you don't understand the terms I'm using, I will define It's not that I understand. Okay? It's that they're, sub, they're useless, normal. Let's just go with this, okay? I agree that immigration varies <laughs> tremendously in eras and countries, right. and that often significant changes in immigration can lead to a very rapid change in the culture of certain areas. I've That's never been to England. My understanding of your cultural changes are limited pretty much exclusively to what I've seen from media. I'm more familiar with what's taking place here in America. I would say right. this simply. There are elements of my culture that I like. I don't believe all cultures are the same. I don't. I, I genuinely don't. One day, I hope that the cultural elements that I like, freedom, democracy, will be present all around the world so I don't have to have such harsh opinions um, uh, you know. Bosh, why why are we arguing so much about definitions uh, we want to have well, a, like an argument agree. here about Sorry, ideas well, well i'm trying to clarify yeah, like my position here. relative to you so okay, but let's let's hang on, hang on. let's take i did position. i haven't so agreed I with I, you I think nor have i finished with my it. point no let him finish yeah so there are problems no. with immigration and I like certain we, elements of certain cultures. Already, However, right? are you really going to impugn me for repetition here? Come now. I will say this. Things need to be yes, handled. you seem to be repeating yourself. Things yeah. need to be handled <laughs> meaningfully. We should be considerate both I, of the I, benefits. I did ask you a question about immigration, though, Bosch. I asked and the you a detriments. question about why we're arguing about definitions. You, that wasn't what I was responding to. I was responding yeah, to an no. earlier claim. I was making a point That's of my problem, own. Bosch. What, yeah, want, what are we, we even want, talking about? I'm explaining my position I, on the cultural you. impact of immigration. Okay. okay. So Tongan is making an ar argument. No, about, he wasn't. He's no, pay attention. He stopped. He's I then opened to give my you perspective. And stopped him about definition. No, he stopped speaking, and then I spoke no, I up and said, here is Wait, my you, perspective okay. on immigration. No, no. The conversation, no, the conversation was Sargon was talking about normal levels of immigration or normal culture, and then you said we can't use loaded words and that's what kind of got off in this whole conversation. That's why you rephrased it the way that you did, which sounded exactly like what Sargon said, only using different words, which is why I said it sounds like you're agreeing with him. What? Yes. So my point is that sometimes there are issues with immigration. I do not think I agree with Sargon in the specifics of how we should apply immigration policy. Sure, but you agree that that Im immigration and influx of people can change the culture and nobody would areas. ever disagree with that i have never met okay, a person well that, in my well, life but that's that's, that's just what Sarin was trying talk. to say and it kind of fell apart from there i thought because you started arguing definitions <laughs> like, yes i wouldn't it be that. nice if we could use words that mean something yeah All words mean something Vosh. um but you you are like being deliberately uh combative here I, is there I a particular position being... you'd like to take because i just took a stance i i don't think that we are in disagreement here that yes, a large scale, a large amount of immigration into a certain area will change the character of that area. Okay, I'm fine with the character of areas right. changing. Okay, but in some, some ways. Hmm? Well, okay, so you're not just fine with it. You have provisos on your. Of team course, if some people came in and their culture was they wanted to rape people, then obviously I'm not in favor of those specific elements. But that okay, doesn't so necessarily. You're Pakistani immigration. But that doesn't necessarily camp. mean I don't want to let them in, and it doesn't necessarily mean that why? all people from that demographic shouldn't be let in. Why? What? Why? Why would you let those people in if you didn't agree with the things? That if we want to keep people from engaging in violent crime or rape or whatever. Um, uh, here in, in the States, we would keep young men from coming in. That would be the most effective way to keep that from happening. Are you in favor okay, of doing that? Then young men are not just all the same, are they? No, but they're substantially more likely to commit violent crimes than any other sure. group of people, regardless of but, race, ethnicity, culture, we, religion. But then if we become more granular than that, then we can actually identify some cultures that have different values. Not even to close. There is no cultural divide that comes even close to the extent to which young men are responsible for violent crime. Why don't we let only there the is, old actually. women in? We can let old women and old men in. 
if if well we we you could but we're not going to because we've got a national health service so definitely not what about little kids we can let all the 10 year olds in they're not going to commit crimes i mean if they do they'll be like i think if they don't have their parents they might well do no the parents will be very old okay and the children will grow into productive workers why should we let any of them in why should we let any of them in so you just don't care about immigration at all no i do care about it that's why i want to stop it okay so you don't want any immigration no, I mean, I wouldn't say zero, but like, yeah, comparatively, comparatively. Oh, okay. Um, because it helps our economy and because I care about other people. Immigrants usually want to come to our country for a reason. cultural consequences. There are consequences so, and benefits. So, A, benefit to the economy. Yeah, well, on, well, 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 you asked me. You've just, you've just been talking, right? Yeah, I just what? want a clarification on that one point, right? So, you, you are fine with mass immigration as long as it benefits the economy. No. Regardless of the damage it does to the culture. No, I didn't say that. Because I literally just said we should take into consideration whatever happens to the culture and that not all cultural okay. changes are desirable. So, okay. A, immigration will, in essentially every case, lead to an increase in economic productivity for the country, which can be redistributed as seen fit amongst its constituents. Two, many cultural changes are either neutral or good. I like cultural diversity. I think it's really cool that in the country I grew up in, the city that I grew up in, it was a plurality of cultures that worked together um, to form a beautiful uh, quilt, a mesh fabric of different people, of different languages, of different foods, of different cultures. It was really beautiful to me. And I don't mean that from some libcucky, like lefty, uh, um, uh, 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 Joseph Trudeau fucking, uh, uh, you know, our diversity is our strength. I mean, I legitimately mean it. Before I was even a leftist, it was nice. And third, and finally, I care about the humanity and livelihood of the people who come into this country. They're as human as we are. If we can help them by letting them in, and it's generally beneficial to let them in, I say we do show. But some of them are German. And... (laughs) You know, I took German Um, language classes back in in college. That explains a lot. Um, What does it explain? The... The thing that Wait, you're not engaging with. What does it explain? I, I I don't think he's just that joking you around, Bosch. What I'm just messing with What's the joke? Me. Okay, sorry. The, the joke is that Germans are basically Nazis. Oh. Um, the the problem though is that you are not acknowledging the actual reality of the consequence of these changed circumstances. Now I use the example of Birmingham because it is such a glaring one. It is actually becoming an Islamic colony. And I think that means that we should reduce the amount of immigration we have into the country. Do so wait, all immigration or just Islamic immigration? Honestly, I mean, for the cultural aspect, primarily I would say Islamic, but overall, because of the damage it's doing to low end wage uh, wage earners, I would say all immigration because we've had 20 years of it. And I think that we've had enough. We've had like 10 million new immigrants into this country. I think we've discussed the economic outcomes. I think we've discussed the economic outcomes sufficiently. Speaking specifically to the culture, you'll have to forgive me. I'm not familiar with the specifics of how England is changing. But every time I've tried to look into this, every time I've read a Breitbart article or some Lauren Southern video on how England is not even England anymore, um, it always ends up being bullshit. I imagine that there are very substantial cold. Wait, 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 hold on. I imagine there are very substantial cultural changes that are taking place over there, very substantial ones. Um, And I do not deny that in many cases, this is probably very disconcerting to the people who live here. These things have to be handled sensibly. However, I have difficulty trusting whatever subjective takes you have on how the Islamification of the UK is taking place. Yeah, but that's just your own bigotry, isn't it? Yes, it's my anti-Britbonger bigotry. Yes. It's your anti-me bigotry. Oh. Um, There's no question... um, where is it? I'll find it. The, this, the, the thing I'm about to send you will be from the Birmingham City Council. Um, and it'll, when I find it, it'll show that um, only 30% of the children in Birmingham schools are actually English. Uh, is that a problem or not? If they have, so 70% of them are foreign born? Uh, yes. I don't have an intrinsic problem with that. Why is that in okay, its own? They're, they're not thing? English though, are they? Because I'm English. What? What is that? What? I don't want Pakistan to be replicated in Birmingham. I don't. So just the fact that 70% of a school's population is non-citizen means nothing to me. Okay. Well, that's your deficiency. Sure. I, it if just whatever means Whatever culture no- it is you like, whatever it is about your culture you like, if you saw that actually being edged out of, what, of the city in which you live, would you literally have no objection? 
What culture? Whatever culture you feel I like you multiculturalism. To. There's no way to okay, blow okay, my culture yeah, okay. out because I value Let, the plurality assume, of cultures. Let's assume you've got a, a city that is a multicultural city, and then a, a, a million Nazis move into the city and make a modern. This isn't a cultural there. thing. Why is that not a cultural Nazism thing? isn't cultural. There have been Nazis of all ethnicities, cultures, religions, amazingly enough. Okay. No, though there have been, even back in World War II, there have been. Um, that's okay. a political affiliation. People of any yeah, culture. Yeah, but it's still a culture. It is still a culture. People Anything of any people, people then I will culture. be specific, Pakistani people can still be socialists like me. So I don't care about it okay, in this. Okay, but what if they're not? What if they're not? So most people aren't yeah. socialists where I live now. Yeah, but what, what, what if they're coming over and replicating the conditions of life in Pakistan, which I would suggest are patriarchal, theocratic, and completely totalitarian? There's no aspect um, wait, what of life does totalitarian that is not mean? by the community. As in all aspects of life are concerned by the governing philosophy. I mean, I grew up near Mormons, so I don't know if this is specifically a foreign immigration problem. It seems to me like just that's just a radical conservative problem. Right? But this this is actually something we wait, can control. Do you do you advocate do you advocate for, the for feminism then? To uh to deal with their patriarchal totalitarian social enclaves? No. Oh, wait, that's interesting. If, wait, you have a problem with them being patriarchal, but you also don't want to advocate for the solution to that problem? No, I have a problem with them duplicating Pakistani culture and not adopting English culture. Well, isn't feminist values part of English culture? Compared yeah. to them, well, compared to them, women's suffrage, not obeying the, the yeah, father. That, there are other people other than feminists who are concerned about these things. Um, no, feminism has pretty much no, been exclusively are, responsible. No. And listen, I know how no. you got your stuff... I know no. how you got your start. You realize that all of society today is predicated on second wave feminist theory. Like everything no, we do disagree. concerning women's suffrage disagree. and our belief in women we working. Disagree, but I'm not interested in debating this point. I know you. you're not. I'm, I'm interested. I'm interested in knowing whether you think that this mass immigration is favorable or unfavorable. You can't you keep giving me qualifiers that are that don't mean anything to me. So you're saying mass so like one school has 70% no, of all schools, all schools in, in Birmingham? Birmingham. Okay. I mean, that's one city. It seems like they're being hit pretty hard by this. It's our second biggest city. Yeah. In but, London, it is, but it is London a is city. 40, yeah, but London in, in, in 2011, London was 42% English. Um, is that a problem? Oh, is this the, uh, the John Cleese thing that you went over? Yeah. Okay. Um, 42%, so 58% of the the city population was foreign-born? Yes, or not non-English, I think. It's, it's not whoa, really whoa, wait, it's hold on. identify this. Well, oh, hold on, wait. Are they foreign-born, or are they non-white? They're not non-white, they're non-English. What is English? English is an ethnic identity. Oh, I don't care about ethnicity. I thought we were yeah, talking about culture. You're yeah, talking you about you're talking race, about an ethno state right now. No, because no, no, no. Race. We're talking about culture, my friend. You're talking yeah, about the English ethnicity. ethnicity. Yeah, but that is the culture. No, culture and yes, ethnicity are two different things, my friend. Why don't you go? Why don't you we look got at the definition? This is, no, this, this is the exact. This is the exact problem we got in last stream. <laughs> Sorry. He, but, he's not saying ethnic ethnicity is is race. He's not using these terms. I he's never said race. I said ethnicity. But we're not talking sure, about ethnicity. But, we're talking about culture. Right. But you you think it's okay for there to be uh, colonies of people who identify a, get a, away from the majority identity of a country, right? I don't know what you're talking about. Why don't you just? Are you talking about race, culture, ethnicity? What are you even talking about now? Uh, uh, ethnicity and culture are essentially synonyms. That is also a Nazi argument. That's very fascinating to me. Wait, really quickly. I have I have an open question to you. Okay. Wait, really quickly. That's really quickly. A Nazi argument. Uh, yes, because ethnically, the, ethnically. Didn't they talk racially? Ethnically, I am Polish. I'm, I'm Polish. That's great. Okay. No, racially. You're wait, wait, wait. Polish. Hold, whoa, whoa, hold on. Ethnically, you're wait, wait, wait. Polish isn't a race. Oh God! Like do you Slavic, not know the then. difference so between ethnicity Slavic. and race? Do you not Slavic. know? Do you Let's just decide on a, a definition and move on, guys? Look. Well, wait, wait, wait. But no, no, no. There, this there, is there wait, is... wait. I'm trying to ask a direct no, question Bush, here. So Bush, ethnically, I... I'm Polish, and I grew up with people of different ethnicities who are all white and all American. We're different ethnicities, but we share a culture. So I don't really care about races. this. Well, what is your no, race? No, we different were different ethnicities. You have no. You're ethnically American. That's your ethnicity. That's how you identify. I actually, you, you actually don't know what ethnicity means. 
Well, let's just okay. let's just agree on a definition and move on. We don't need to argue definitions for 30 minutes. Okay, so what is this 42% English thing? I care about culture. That's right. what we're L talking about here, not ethnicity. Okay, London is culturally 42% English. How do you describe this? How do you know? Do you or how, wait, are 58% of them don't identify as... Yeah, uh, the census. Do you identify as English or French or European or whatever? What was the census question exactly? Well, I'd have to look it up. Was it what culture do you identify with? Or was it what no, ethnicity what, what you identify with? What is your ethnic with? identity? Ah, your ethnic I identity? see. Okay. Okay. Maybe you want to move on to a different talking point, my friend. We can talk about no, culture. I'm, I'm just not here for your weird ethnostate <laughs> stuff. That's kind of weird. I'm not talking about weird ethnostate stuff. I mean, like, do you think there aren't any black English people? Yes, there are. I Wait, agree. So what's the problem? I, I so don't know. What is the problem? Okay, are, so, bla are black Americans ethnically American, or what are they? Uh, well, ethnically, I think at this point they would just be considered African American because they don't have a clear lineage back to whatever African country they would have been. Yeah, but they're from, ethnically but... American. Yeah, so yes. ethnically, and they my are American, family's then. ethnically Polish Irish. I have a shillelagh hanging above my father's okay, so den. Let me okay. let me fix. Well, let me try. To yeah, fix go this, ahead. We had this <laughs> argument for like two hours last week. <laughs> yeah, Sargon. it was fun. Okay. I loved it. The, the definition of ethnicity that I believe Sargon's operating under is the one that you find if you just Google the word, which says the fact or state of belonging to a social group that is a common national or cultural tradition. Now, I agree that in America, it's typically not used in that way, which is where I think the confusion comes from. Ethnicity, in a census sense, is usually used to refer to country of origin. But you can no. be culturally British. In incorrect. Incorrect. You incorrect. can be culturally stop, British. Stop, and stop, stop, stop. Whoa, 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 whoa. Carl! A, no, interrupting Walsh, Walsh, Carl! Triggered you're Carl you're just, over here can't wrong, handle can six sentences without his own. No, no it's, it's about self-identity, okay. Walsh. Self-identity. The British census is entirely done by self-identity. Let me see a copy of the British census. Hold on. Google it. Yeah. This is so, what the so, whole joke about Kekistan is. What uh, was the, the point that you, wait, yeah, wait, so what was the point that you're making? Go the, ahead, the point Seth. I'm making is that if most of London does not identify as English, at what point do we say maybe we should stop immigration? Well, right. What do you mean identify as English? I don't know what that means. When when most of when most of Birmingham no longer identifies as English, do we sit there and think What do you mean identifies as English? Where yeah, what what's confusing about that? Well, you're I saying don't, what, what sorry, do you mean? And you're saying that on the census people choose I, how to identify, and you're saying people choose not to identify as English. That's correct. Okay. Okay. And, and at what point do we say how, how many English cities should be full of people who are not English? What it, who, they, who I don't know what these questions mean. Are we talking about ethnicity or culture? I thought we were I talking about. I culture. don't know how else to explain it. Self-identified Volsh. Self-identified Self in an ethnic sense. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. 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 We're waiting for an answer from you, Vosh. Like, is, it, is it legitimate to say once, once like the two largest cities in England now have hardly any English people in them? What do you mean English people? Actually, also, what do you mean I've hardly just any? Explained to you Why do you keep using English language is? like this? How many of our cities must fall to the scourge of the non-English? Just ask me what the fuck. I, I wait, wait. Here's a, wait, wait. Can I phrase this for you? I thought this was your fucking job. No, Holy shit! What to what that. extent do you think English cities should be subjected to non-English culture before we have a problem? Like, why is okay. it so yeah. difficult yeah. for you to ask simple yeah. questions yeah. without when throwing the, in a bunch of loaded horseshit? The two largest horseshit. ones are minority English. I think that we've had too much immigration. Boss, your response. I mean, I don't know. I thought I thought we already agreed earlier that two percent of the. <laughs> no. I'm trying well, to answer. What about three? When when three large, largest English. I don't. This isn't how I look at right. cultural changes. I like legitimately okay, don't care about these criteria. And this is why you're getting Nazis, Vosh. Well, no, we're actually okay, getting you, Nazis. You according to the according to the Nazis, like, according to the Nazis, we're the getting Nazis right from rising. you. Actually, I wouldn't want to talk but about what's leading to Nazis because they keep pointing at you. See, if we were all adults here, we could deal with immigration sensibly and actually discuss the you problems with immigration but aspect. because of people like you who are exclusively dedicated to whining like children about perceived cultural impact from immigration can, can, can we get nazis question, because we uh, no longer have Sargon, people having sensible discussions question. so it's not that people are afraid of the changing environment around them it's that I'm i listen to the nazis when the nazis tell me who radicalized them and that's making them nazis would they bosh would they be turning to to the personalities that you are saying they're turning to if the immigration wasn't a problem. 
I mean, in no every, in, throughout at least American history, because I'm limited to that, every single time we have a big jump in immigration from a foreign culture, people like Carl gone over here jump over to talk about how this is the death of America. But, it but happened with it, the, well, no, it happened it with the people the, though. But you're not answering the question. Well, no, no, no. Increased and the decreased levels of immigration over time. Yes, and every time the country the country up. keeps ticking on strong. It's really strange. We had a huge jump with the Chinese. We had a huge jump with up Mexicans. We had a huge jump with Italians. We had a huge jump with the Polish. We had a huge jump with the Irish. We had a huge jump with the Germans back a little bit after the states were formed, after the Revolutionary War. Do, and do you every whoa, 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 why, the words wait, why does Carl get to just talk over me? Because you interrupt people all the time. You're constantly <laughs> yeah. going on. You are constantly. The going difference on. is the moderator will call you out when, when I interrupt. Voice. The moderator will call me out when I interrupt you, but you just get to voice. do it. Cucked you mods. You are engaging with what I've just said. So I, no, well, hold on, really quickly. I want to point out every single time this happens, every time there's a huge spike in immigration that leads to a demographic displacement and a ton of cultural changes in major American cities, there are people like you who talk about how this is the death of the empire, how all classic American values like are going to die, and every single not, time, every single opinion. time, they end up being wrong. So something tells me there's there's something to this cycle. I think we can learn of because. I love learning. Yeah, there is, there is I love cycle learning from the cycle. Ignoring. And what well, it suggests to me. cycle you're ignoring, Walsh. Let him, wait, let him, the thing let him, wait, let me is finish? That there are times in your history where you contract immigration as well. What does that you have understand? to do with the point I just made? <laughs> well, you, He's doing the supervillain laugh again, the anime shit. <laughs> no, you, Walsh, right? You're saying America has a wave of immigration and it doesn't collapse the empire. And I'm saying, yeah, that's because after the wave of immigration, that goes down and it contracts immigration. The proportional and, amount of people we received in those waves of immigration would dwarf what you're dealing with right now with Pakistani or Syrian refugees. So what? We're a smaller country. So are you suggesting so people think you've taken... Now, are you so well, we need to So obviously, there is a prior pattern of people hyperbolizing the downsides of immigration no, following a spike. they immigration! After a few years or decades, it's been a few years. Yes, and we have had 20 years of mass immigration. Oh, uh, uh, wait, are we talking, wait, wait, 20 years. 20 years of mass Muslim immigration? Yes. I thought well, we were, well, uh, so, so, you're, so, you're te so you're telling me that the current spike that's taken place since the uh, Syrian refugee crisis is consistent with the spike that was taken place the Syrian every 20 refugees, you goober. So it has nothing to do with that at all? No. We took hardly any. That's what the Calais migrant camp was. That's what they were whining. You should take some immigrants, uh, refugees. No, we, we take just natural immigration, legal, normal immigration, nothing to do with the refugees. Okay, then why do you want to end? Years. Wait, wait, wait. Then if that's it, why do you want to end all immigration? Why not just cut because it down a little bit? we've had open borders for 20 years. You, oh, 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 you haven't had open borders. If they did, you could yes, literally swim across the channel. No, that's not what you open borders actually, means. Actually, that's what happened the other day, yeah. Really? You can just swim across the channel and instantly become yes. an, uh, an English citizen? Really? No, obviously. No, okay, so shut the we, fuck up. Open borders have wait, a definition. You, I know you're so inclined to believe that okay. words don't have actual course, definitions. You are just not listening, right? So they we don't have, have open borders. Are, wait, Why don't you, you just yes, reduce immigration three, a little bit? Are you talking about immigration or naturalization? What I'm, that's what I'm asking for, Bush. Wait, Holy wait, shit. wait, wait. Just it's a like little bit. To a child. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So a little bit of immigration cut down. You're talking about an almost complete end yes. of immigration, specifically yes. with Islamic yes. immigration. Yes, completely. That's not what I just suggested. Zero. I love my zeros, Vosh. And? Vosh, do, do you understand that you have literally argued your way around to my perspective? What's my perspective on this exactly? You just said, why don't we reduce immigration a bit? I, and I'm like, when yeah, have I, I ever said. been opposed? I said multiple times over this that immigration can have downsides and should well, be moderated. What's so about? I, I'm pointing out the downside. Yes, you are pointing out the downside and then suggesting okay. an end to Islamic immigration. Is that correct? Yes. So yes. that's not what I'm advocating for. I'm advocating Why? for sensible immigration policy that cuts it down that a little bit. That is sensible. So Vosh, you're not for open borders? Uh, it may be like hundreds of years from now. I don't think our system today could survive that. Wow. Okay. I, I completely agree with you. I completely agree. Sounds like we so have some I'm... agreement then. No, I'm not literally... really. Because, and this is, again, <laughs> this is another example, and I would love it if I could go for at least 30 seconds without being interrupted. This is another example of how we agree on a problem, but have lunatic different opinions on how it should be solved. So I have never in my you life... You said, why don't you reduce immigration? 30 then? seconds. You I have said, never in my life suggested Sorry, God, please, that we should... Finish. I have never in my life suggested that we should just let everyone in. 
nor have I ever said that we should never restrict immigration. I said multiple times in this discussion that immigration can have downsides and should be approached sensibly, that policy shouldn't be made to just let everyone in. The issue here, of course, Sargon, is that the conclusions I derive from this is a sensible immigration policy where we slowly curtail in accordance with the cultural and economic needs of the country, not full stop end immigration from Islamic countries while talking Why? about the Islamification of our state. So, so Bosch is one of those Why? criteria the that the cultural the the culture sustains itself in any way shape or form because it seems like that's the argument that sargon is making like what, what is I, the you're saying you're what, you're advocating for sensible immigration what is the criteria for your sensible immigration um i mean it wouldn't be curtailing all islamic immigration because of a relatively small jump in crime it's nothing to do with the jump in crime man it's to do with the change in culture then why do you complain about muslim rape gangs if it's not about crime <laughs> Because I don't want English girls to get raped. So you care about the crime. Why would you just lie about that then? Yeah, but it, the thing is, it wasn't really treated as a crime. That's the problem. The police are just deliberately... Don't weasel it. your way out of it. You said you don't care about crime. Now you care about crime. So the crime yeah, increase has been... It wasn't... It wasn't... Weasley little cops, Carl yeah. slipping his way out of that point. Now, of you, course... You don't understand the situation. That's the problem. You just don't know what you're talking about. Really? Yes. Can we... I, I want to move on to Categorically. One Categorically, my God, man, you literally say, oh, I don't know anything about this. And then when I explain it to you, you go, oh, weasley little You just don't know. What? I, no, it, I called you a weasley liar because you said you don't care about crime. And then you said you care about crime. And then, oh, well, it's not treated as a crime. What the fuck are you talking about? Look, I've explained it multiple times. If you can't understand that, then you can't understand. But the, the point is, Voss, you actually agree with me on the concept of immigration. Nobody disagrees that people should sensibly engage in immigration policy. What, are, what right. are the criteria for you, Vosh? I am not familiar enough with the UK to outline an entire well, political... America. In America? Right now, American yeah. immigration is fine. I thought that's what we were going to talk about because I'm more okay. familiar. Million American immigration is doing just peachy keen great. A mil, a one point three million a year is peachy for you. Yeah, I don't have a problem. We got with a that. much bigger country, so. Yeah, but do you not think that that's a just as, oh, it's a scary, called? it's a scary number, Carl. It's very big. I know it's very scary. No, it's fine. I'm cool with it. Course, that's like zero point three percent of our population. Can we can we move do you on not to think that that contributed up? to Donald Trump's success? Immigrants coming into the country contributed to Donald Trump's success. The scale of immigration into your country. Uh, no. You don't think so? No, the far right have been active okay. in this country for over a century, whether or not we have high levels of non-white right. immigration. But this, 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 the New York Times said this. They, oh, wait, wait, Dude, wait, 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 really quickly, wait, 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 really quickly, I should clarify, I should clarify, does immigration lead to Trump getting voted in? No, of course not. Do fear mongers who complain about immigration lead to people like Trump getting elected? Yes, This, this yes. dovetails, this dovetails ni nicely into the point that I want. I've got time, to... I've got time for one more topic. I've got, okay, it's going to well, take sir, a lot, I hope I got a lot of super chats in this, because I've got a lot of I've, chemo. I've, I've got a response to this, I've got a response well, to this. Go ahead, Because Vos, Vos, Vos seems to fail to understand that there are actually people on the ground who come into contact with immigration from cultures with which they have severe value disagreements. This is and how I make severe, giant policy well, decisions. You're interrupting, Bosh. Let him right, finish. These severe value disagreements are why these people are opposed to immigration. You don't need, like, I mean, if, if there were no far-right commentators, then the, they would be raised up through the natural demand of these people to have someone represent their position of, the country around us is changing and we didn't ask for this. Yeah, just like that's every other immigration unfair. period in this country. So I don't wait. I don't care. This is such a wait. This is such a feelings over facts argument. Some yes. people are upset yes, about their culture changing. About, yes, it's entirely about that. Oh, okay, well, well, I, well, my facts don't care about your guys's feelings. Terribly okay, sorry. But what what but people vote on their feelings, you. not on your facts, dummy. This people is what you're facts asking. influence Trump. feelings, like the fact, for example, that immigration. <laughs> that immigration <laughs> increases economic output, or the fact, Adam, for example, Adam. that this country has been built from immigration for two and a half hundred years. So- Adam, does, do facts influence people's feelings? What kind of counterpoint is this? Adam, do facts yeah. influence- Weren't conservatives supposed to be the fact-oriented one, and Not now you really, guys are the ones who are crying, whining about personal accounts of situations to try and justly broad, broadly justify a larger point? Are people you want to move losing on, on the their facts one? or the feelings? What? Our feelings feelings shape the facts. facts. I have no. I can't even hear what Carl is saying. What? Feelings shape the facts. 
in fact, shape the feelings. It's a beautiful interplay. But when no, I like to talk about no, immigration, no, you're, you're wrong. When I like to influence immigration policy, when I like to talk about big immigration policy decisions, I usually don't like to rely on. But have you heard about the people on the street who are being hurt by this? That doesn't usually. Why don't you Why your entire that? argument is appeal. Also. To no, no, no. Everything that I've said is pretty factually backed up. Also, the majority of the people opposed to immigration in Britain live in 95% plus white towns and villages. These aren't no, people. Don't. Wait, wait. Okay, wait. London and Birmingham vote mostly remain. The areas that are being affected most by this immigration are the ones most fine with it. It's the dipshit they fucking the rural. It's the rural fucking whiteies that are terrified because of people like Those you. Evil rural whiteies. Yeah, well, they're the ones who voted. Evil rule. Yeah, I, I are you, point are out your to... feelings hurt, my dude? You don't like that argument? There's a, there's a. Alabama, Alabama is the poorest state in the union. Like to go after what, Alabama, what does that have to do with what them. I just said? What <laughs> did just, I you, did I bring up wealth at any point during what I just said? No, you you no, brought you, you called out Alabamans on the stream, and I was thinking, <laughs> man, like the they're poor people. Man. What does that like, do? You is it fun like? trying to it's divert a, points okay to protect to Carl. Wait, wait, wait. Is it, wait, is it fun for you to try and divert away from points that blow Carl's argument the fuck out when he's suggesting that on-the-ground interaction with people of different I'm cultures making... is what caused people to be anti-immigration, but in reality, the majority of anti-immigrant sentiment comes from majority white villages? What? So let's Which completely blows that, that argument the fuck happening. out. Let's they move on to the last point. Last point, and it's quick. Yeah. What, uh, so you, you made an argument that you know people are turning to these different personalities and and becoming far right and sargon seems to be making the argument that immigration is the the reason for that that they see the culture changing around them and that frightens them you haven't really taken a position on what what you think sensible immigration should be based on whether it's economics or culture but i'm curious do you, do you do you think that the these personalities would have such sway in the culture if immigration was cut off if immigration wasn't an issue do you think that the neo not that not sorry not the neo nazis would there still do you be think the original nazis yes. party would have been able to rise to power if there were no jews to put a scapegoat on well, I'm this is a direct question. parallel to your question. The existence Why of a scapegoat, the existence of a scapegoat class, does not necessarily mean that they are the problem. It is entirely possible for far right personalities to rise up scapegoating those groups. That does not mean they are at fault. So you're saying they would scapegoat other groups that are already. It has been happening for hundreds of years. Yes. Okay, so that's so right. you're you're Sorry, saying that respond. yeah so. The thing is, Vosh, right? You're not engaging with the actual factual, like, reality on the ground here, right? The factual so, reality we, on the ground where you list a well, bunch well, of anecdotal well, let, arguments let with no finish. sources to back up? Let him, let him finish. Well, what sources would, finish. What would you, you like a respond. source for? I want a like source for your feelings. For? Write out your feelings to me, comrade. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not my feelings that are really the problem. It's the feelings of the people who are going to vote for the Nazis, isn't it? Yeah. As I said, I don't think the existence of a group to scapegoat means that the group that is scapegoating them is in the right. But you accept that there are problems with immigration. There are problems with almost every civic practice in existence. There are so problems with universal health care. Can healthcare. we, can we, can, I agree, uh, can we talk about the problems of immigration without scapegoating immigrants? I have done so, and have done so on my channel as well. Right. And so is, is, the, is the changing nature of the culture that is being spread further and further out from these enclaves in, say, something like Birmingham, something we can talk about without scapegoating immigrants? You can absolutely... When have I ever said you can't talk about it? Why are you posturing, ascribing to me positions I don't hold? I have I'm never said you questions. can't talk about it. I'm, okay, that's fine. You can just say yes, right? Um, so is, is it fair for English people to look at the sort of new Pakistans that are springing up across their country and saying, actually, I'm not in favor of this? When if I, they can have whatever feelings they want in it, but right, the okay. people who so, live in these areas are more likely to be supportive of immigration than those who live away from the Pakistanis. That's, that's not, that's not true. It is factually true. Then why are that's, all of the remainers, the ones who live in big cities? Because they're the immigrants that vote. Really? It's all, oh, it's all the immigrants voting. Listen. The non-citizens right? as well? If, they just if, snuck that if, in? What, what non-citizens? 
all we're the non-citizens, the non-citizen immigrants. Illegal, illegal immigration is we don't illegal immigration isn't a problem for us. We don't have like a six thousand mile border with Mexico, right? We're an island. We don't have a problem with illegal immigration. Right. So the, the massive disparity between the majority white, heavy leave rural areas of the UK and the heavy remain majority diverse communities in your big cities that's just because of immigrants voting. There's just no association whatsoever it, between it, it's, engaging it, with a minority community. And people who are this, your original them. point was that people are like, I see a lot of cultural changes in my area, and that makes me want to vote for Nazis. But the people who are voting for the yeah. right aren't in contact with the foreign groups that you claim are leading them towards that direction. That they, also, if do, you do actually you cared, why wouldn't you advocate for anti-far-right policies? Nothing you say right now I, is consistent. I am advocating for an anti-far-right policy. Pro, open borders is a pro-far-right policy. No. The far yes. right does. Then why do the far right all advocate against because open borders? Because they fucking thrive on it. Do you understand? What the you fuck having are open you talking borders about? Is you saying I want Nazis? That's what you're saying. What? I That's don't want Trump. open That's borders. Why you got Brexit? What are you talking about? Change. Wait, the far right wants open I'm borders, and I also want say, open what are you borders. About and do you have any idea what the understand? fuck you're saying? Wait, so do the you? far right wants open borders, but I want open borders, and that's why Nazis happened. They love open borders. It gives them power. Oh, wait, so they don't want it. They just like scapegoating it. I've already said I don't care what they scapegoat. Whether or not Nazis are able to exploit the sensibilities of stupid white people has nothing to do with whether or not their positions are valid. All right, right, closing statements. It doesn't matter whether. Yeah, closing statements. It it doesn't matter that you're going to get Nazism if you carry. Closing statements. All right, I'm ready. We can give Kogan the last word, so I'll hit it up. I have a throbbing headache from this. So um, this was a good 2v1. I think I did decently. My main issue here is that Sargon failed to bring any actual arguments. He constantly postures and pretends as though he constantly. cares about a tiny, tiny portion of the population, but he'll lie about essentially every broader empirical point to get there. He will absolutely break the pearl necklace apart when talking about a minor 2% reduction in wages to a specific sector given a large increase in immigration, but ignore the enormous economic increases that immigration bring to the country including the lower portion of its wage earners due to broader economic efficiency increases and increases in trade policy. He will break his neck throwing a fit over the poor, poor whiteies in England who are super concerned with all the Pakistanis coming in while ignoring the fact that the people who voted um, leave, the people who are most uh, uh, at odds with the existence of Pakistanis in their country are the whites in rural areas who never see a brown person. Whereas the people who actually live in diverse communities and day to day interact with the Pakistanis are themselves much, much, much more receptive to immigration because studies have shown that being in the company of minority groups drastically increases your willingness to engage with them, to live in a society with them. So again, it was really fun. There was a lot of interlocution. I think we got through maybe 15 minutes worth of talking points in three hours and 10 minutes, but that's okay. It was mostly here for the experience. Hopefully Carl over here brings some facts next time, but his feelings were able to hold him up this hey, time. Hey, Vosh, I don't want you to storm off for a second because i do want to no, thank I mean, you I'm, for... i'll wait for carl to finish i'm not gonna like okay yeah run off. i well i hate to interrupt carl but i i'm just curious Vosh, because like you had a really good debate with uh paul vanderclay like you don't always get this this oh uh, oh that's because paul vanderclay was a good faith actor sargon is but not why do you well, I, I why do you not think that sargon is the fact that you actor? were participating and a witness to this debate and you don't understand the difference well, in decorum I, be, well, well it was I'm just be, you're, that you're you don't understand the difference he's insulting you though you're calling him stupid you're like you're you're throwing insults right and left i mean what, uh, I don't. I don't you, care for your civility politics. I think acting in bad faith is far worse than insulting the person who is that, acting in bad that faith. That is acting in bad faith. No. Man. That no. is acting in bad faith. Okay, sure. Yes, uh, Paul Vanderclay was an intelligent, kind, receptive person interested in having a conversation on a topic he actually cared about. Wasn't it's just so lying over. spent half his day here with us. Why do you think he's not interested in an intelligent conversation? Did I, did I, did I Adam, fling a single answer? Adam, I'm terribly sorry, Adam, but if he's your friend, I understand. I can't make you see what I see. Well, I, I, I'm not, I, I just, I'm, I just wonder why you, I mean, even just for the sake of argument, you could just say, pretend that he's coming to you in good faith and we could argue the issues. 
I I understand. I, I, don't I have want spent you to the majority of this discussion trying to actually hone in on the points rather than posture and misdirect back to points that previously made. I don't. I don't want you to think that I don't think there are bad faith actors in the world. I very much do. I think those bad faith actors exist. I don't think Sargon is one of them. Until you engage in an honest conversation with these people. You really don't ever know. So, My channel is dedicated uh, to engaging in good faith conversations with people who I strongly disagree with. But some people who I disagree with act in good faith, and some people don't. And that's fine. Well, then, I When I came on here, I knew what I was getting into. It's not like Sargon's I, I history indicates you anything else. I don't think I've said that's in bad faith. Le Sargon, yeah. Sargon, I thought you were going to end on this. I thought you were going to have your closing moments. I guess this can be the last thing I say. You are critically no, no, Vosh, retarded. No, let, no okay. Vosh. See, that's uh, peak good faith, Vosh. You're totally We're done with the discussion. Him. We don't have to be like super civil now. That's my opinion of you. I, I you're very, very civil. stupid. And I also think you're I would very just rather be civil. You're very far right as well. And I don't think you're okay. smart enough to understand your own positions. I'm very Why don't far you just market yourself as a conservative? Uh, because I don't really think that's an appropriate label. Okay. I mean, you're fe free to feel that way. I respect your identity. But at the end of the day, like, I really do think you're a disgusting <laughs> human being who contributes negatively <laughs> okay. to public discourse. Bosh. All right. Thanks, Bosh. Go ahead, sir, and you have the floor. You have your final. Um, I, 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 I have Sorry, been guys. persuaded by Vosch's very mild and kind mannerisms and manners. Uh, I, I agree that the working class are the people we need to help, and we need to do that by lowering their wages and making their day-to-day -day lives more difficult by introducing thousands and thousands of people with whom they can't even really interact. I think that when they say that they don't like this, we should tell them to shut the fuck up because they're just stupid, poor white people who don't know what they're talking about. Okay, got All it. Right. So there's the bad faith id pull argument to lower it off. Um, we good? We're gonna, we have a bunch of super chats to read. Uh, <laughs> you guys are welcome to stick around for them. Either I'll stick of around. Yeah, you're, uh, you're welcome to go or stay, Vosh, it's your call. If there's, a, if there's like a super chat or two that's directed at me, I can respond to that, but then I've got, a, sure I've got to tend to my own flock. Yeah, well, there might be some insults, so. I'm fine with right. that. <laughs> the Super Chess director, you are not questions. <laughs> are there any no. questions there? If you if there are just insults, then you can respond with uh, to all of them with yes. Whatever they, I get, they, you can just be like, Bosch would have said yeah. yes. They're mostly insults, yes. Okay, well, that's fair enough. All right, well... In that case, I'm probably going to head. It has, as always, been a tremendous pleasure. Um, Carl Gunn, try not to crash any political parties over the next decade. And uh, yeah. Well, even far right ones. Um, Didn't you be my biggest fan? Honestly, I really genuinely You're believe. You're secretly pro far right. Aren't you? you are the You're failure. You are the failure from You're which. You're looking at the far right and going, oh, I'm tempted. You are the failure so from tempted. which competent far right people learn. So I would actually appreciate it if you didn't fail anymore because you're like a good uh, <laughs> dousing rock. Which, 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 are you talking about CNN analyst Richard Spencer? What? Oh, who who is learning from me? I mean, I've talked about what? I've talked about multiple far right figures who, who say that you're a good entry is point. Learning from me in the far right. Are you name. asking for names? Name the Nazi. Yes. Who? Are you? Do you think Name I, a far right person who is learning from me, Vor? I mean, Nick Fuentes and Richard and Spencer and how, Daily how Stormer officials is, did, have didn't, all said that you are. Well, wait, wait, you asked me. They have all said yeah. that you're a good entry point to the alt right because you but essentially reiterate the their basic not positions. Very big. And why, this well, has I've got a million what? subscribers. Richard, suspends, Richard Spencer has like 3,000 or something. What? Why don't my subscribers? Yeah, yeah Richard Spencer influence is limited to his YouTube channel. That's true. So, That's correct. Yeah, but why aren't they following him? Richard Spencer on the Yeah, yeah. And like side. I said, Richard, I mean, sorry, Sargon of Akkad is the failure from whom they learn. They come to you yeah, because they're, they're wait, 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 why am I, why am I getting caught here again? I've already mentioned this like three times. They come to you because you're like the proto, you know, you're like the beginning, you're anti-SGW, okay. anti-feminist, anti-immigration, anti-Islam. Sure. And then they realize sure. you're cucked because you don't realize that the Jews are behind it. Because I'm not a Nazi. Yeah. And they, yes, because you're not, the thing is, yes, because you're yeah, not a Nazi. The, the and then they jump to Nazis. Actually, yeah, but, I know no, it's not actually real because it, that far. acknowledging that it exists would impugn you to no, hell. The pipeline just doesn't arrive there. Mm -hmm. 
Like, uh, they I know. I mean, there's been act, there's there's been actual audience. data. There's actual data on this. So yeah, but what's their reach? What's their audience? What reach? What audience? What are you exactly. talking about? That, no, no, that's the question. What reach? What audience? Why? Why is it that I've what, got? Like, why are you defending this point? Me. I was about to head out. So wait, what is the why size is of the it all that right? Millions of people watch me, and millions of people don't watch them. If I am a pipeline to them, because a smaller portion of your audience gets funneled off to them. I didn't say it was yeah, a so one to one it, ratio. It's, it's literally a minute school amount isn't it i mean that depends on how many nazis you think you radicalizing is minuscule you were really worked I, up about two percent earlier any. i would be willing to bet that more than twenty thousand people have been worked into farther right positions than you're comfortable with from your content if two okay, percent is the threshold the for what we have to care people about have become more moderate gotcha all right as long as the majority of your fans don't literally become neo-nazis i gotcha all right um, aren't you yeah. Aren't you radicalizing people to a certain extent? No, Rush? I have I mean, been very clear and also um, uh, denouncing the tankies. I have pulled people away from being tankies, well, justifying good. Stalin. I've never, de I've never denounced the whole right. Yeah, <laughs> except mean, you yeah. look like a fool every time you do, and then you go around making their arguments anyway. Uh -huh. I don't make tanky they, arguments. They, and I never, I never make tanky arguments about, say, example, killing the landlords or the blood of the business owners will run through the street or the USSR <laughs> iconography. I don't In make those game. arguments. Yeah, but the, the okay, wait a minute, I. I'm, I'm going to wait. I, wait, is, I thought I was wait, going to no, go. What no, the fuck? Because this has been going on for like this, the same point. But I've already illustrated this point, or I've already explained. No, because you're making the same point. You just defended the same point that you're making at Sargon. Because Sargon will say, I have a problem with immigration for X, y, re X, Y, Z reasons, but you know, I'm not saying that they should kill people. And then you say, well, I have problems with landowners, but I'm not saying you should kill people. Like these are the same arguments that you're what? making. What? No, I advocate for very sensible policies in regards to all of this. The issue so is Sargon. the issue. Well, he's not advocating issue, for neo-Nazi policy. The issue is that my positions are internally consistent, whereas Sargon's positions leave open questions. Hey, for example, really quickly, really quickly, wait, 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 really quickly, really quickly. I can, I can just do one, and then I'll leave. Okay, Sargon, you believe in cultural Marxism, right? Uh, what do you mean by cultural Marxism? Do you believe that there's kind of like not a not like a super conspiracy, oh, no. but do you do you believe that there is sort of a collection of like far left leaning people who are working through media and academia to like change the intellectual, academic, demographic nature of this country? Do you mean the social justice movement? Is that well? I just described what is referred to as the cultural Marxism conspiracy theory. If you've retooled it, yeah, as what's, the social... what's the conspiracy? A conspiracy is in secret. This is just open. They say I'm a social justice advocate. No, no, no. I'm not I saying feminism, advocate... I So, this, so I you do believe that there are a group of left leaning people who are trying to infiltrate media, academia to bring infiltrate. Like they're the journalists who are reporting on this and saying ten reasons why it's bad to be a white person and shit like this. Like, what, okay, whoa, like whoa, whoa, wait, wait, why are they doing that? Because they're radical leftists. Why else? Wait, 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 wait. I'm radical leftist. I don't fucking hate white people. Wait, what about? Uh, okay. What about? Why are they doing that? Apart from if, wait, 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 wait from really quickly, really quickly. Or, why? Wait, why the are they doing that? Are you are you saying that the far left is responsible for cultivating a um, an ideology of anti whiteness in this in this country? Oh yeah. Okay, cool. So why are they doing that? Because they view white people as the eternal oppressors of non-white people. Okay, who's a non-white group? Well, what do you mean? Who's a well, what you're describing right now... Races that are not European. Okay, well, really quickly, just so you know, what you're describing right now, and I'm not ascribing this position to you, so I want to be able okay. to finish my point before you interrupt me, okay. is the Jewish question. Everything that I just said. No, I know, I know, I know, I know. It's very, it's very funny. But what you just you described, you just described as a, that is literally the Jewish question. Left leaning, the leftist. Jews. Hold on. Well, that's the thing. That's the only jump a person needs to make. You believe that there is a leftist tradition in this country. Jews, There's man. a. And this is if you don't understand how you people. setting up the existence of a conspiracy and then of, of people, uh, anti-white leftists trying to destroy the country because they view uh, whiteies as the eternal oppressor. And then if you don't see the relationship between that and Nazis saying, oh, yeah, all of that is completely true. It's just the Jews who do it. The Jews are using the left to perpetuate right. uh, antagonism against the whites because Jews want to destroy the white race. Yeah. This is literally... The same, you've just swapped out. I don't think Jews want to they? destroy the white I know, race. I never, I, I even that. specifically said, I'm not ascribing this to you because right. you don't so, believe okay, in the stop, Jewish stop, question. Stop, stop, I'm stop, telling stop, you how stop, easily stop, stop, you can stop, move stop, stop, from stop, one stop, to the stop, other. Stop, 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 stop. Let stop, him respond. Stop. Go ahead. Because 
what you've said there apart from like don't worry about the nazi conspiracy you, like okay so are there large numbers of left-wing um uh, academics journalists and activists who are very much against what they would call whiteness yes categorically true wait what I'm do you mean by whiteness i don't care what you, if you don't understand don't wait, wait just, i understand quiet, perfectly right? what do you mean by whiteness no, do you just, mean white people it doesn't matter whatever they mean by whiteness oh, whatever they mean by whiteness, okay it doesn't matter what i think of it, right but are they on constantly going on about whiteness and white people yes they are yeah are they pro mass immigration yes are many damn why are they like doing that or, it's, it's almost like a specific cultural group is trying to use because, mass immigration to culturally displace white people Ah, I wonder who yeah, it is. I want. Oh well, Jews. damn! It's just such a small leap. You just you set them up, Carl. Anyway, just I'm, just quickly clarify. Just quickly, that's in, that's quickly untrue. clarify. You will literally keep well, me here forever, and I don't care I that much about you. Am I saying something that's untrue? Well, yeah, obviously. What? What have I said that's untrue? I'm. Do you really want me to spend my time debunking the Jewish yes. question here? Tell with you? me what? No, no, not. You're bringing up Jews. I'm not bringing up Jews. Right. I think this is through ideology. This I, mean, is I getting, don't think Ben Shapiro is part of this conspiracy or anything. This is getting, I don't think it's a conspiracy at all. I think this is just a movement that's born out of the Enlightenment because of a, a particularly warped definition of the term freedom. This is like, getting that's desperate. What I think. Whether or not you believe the but point what do is you legitimate. Think about the Jews, Vosh? I mean, do you cite Wait, Marcus so you do it? wait, you do want me to talk about the GQ? You seem to want to talk about Jews. No. I was trying to illustrate. Why did you bring it up? Because I was trying to point out that what you point out and advocate for is functionally identical to the Jewish question. All it takes is a small ideological leap to assign the Does agents behind the system. That's but it. doesn't it also require me to want to genocide people? I didn't say you believe in the JQ. Are you actually then, like? Are you actually okay, my dude? Then why bring it up? Because are I'm you, saying that I, this, I, this is, is a real actually thing. astonishing. I don't and think you're capable of understanding basic thing. jumps in this logic. This other thing is a real thing. I'm just observing reality. Right. They, yeah, they're, they're just observing reality these... too. Yeah, yeah. Why are there so many people no, in not. media and they're academia not. who are Jewish? Yeah, they're just observing reality too. Uh, you that, actually can't connect the pieces. That's not the same question. That's not the same question. All right. It's been you fun. You don't seem to understand what I'm saying. It's been fun. I appreciated the conversation very much. I understand. Yeah, I understand your discomfort. Yeah. All right. Holy shit. That was so much worse than I was expecting. That's okay. Oh my god. God damn. He's so much stupider than I imagined. I'm never going on that um that Adam friended thing again. That was a fucking 2v1 the entire time. Holy shit. That was a 2v1 the entire time. I couldn't get anything out with that fucking moderator, fucking Adam. Adam was the same guy, by the way, who just a few days ago was defending no bullshit after evidence was provided that no bullshit was a white nationalist. And Adam was like, come on, man. I think Adam's a crypto. Maybe he's not a crypto. Maybe he's just really fucking stupid. Holy shit, dude. That was so fucking bad. ISO, go up. There we go. It was similar to Destiny's debate with Sargon. No, because Destiny was smart enough not to uh, not to fucking go on a show with a moderator. Holy shit. You've got a lot of content creators. Hunter Avalon, Anthony Fantano, Christy Winters, Hassan Piker, and Nick Fuentes. Holy shit, that many people? How many of them are around? Hunter Avalon, keep up the good work. Anthony Fantano, Melon Man, Christy Winters. I disagree with you in a lot of things, but you're probably a better person than most of the people watching right now. Hassan Piker, I, you're so fucking hot, dude. And Nick Fuentes, uh, fuck you. Quit being a Nazi, maybe? Can you work, work on that? Holy shit. All right, we're bringing the mic back. Oh my god. Were you being aggressive on purpose? It is so frustrating. Every single fucking time um, I was trying to make a point, Sargon would interrupt and Adam wouldn't stop him from interrupting. And every time I was trying to make, uh, or Sargon was trying to make a point and I would interrupt, um, Adam would immediately jump in. Fucking crazy, dude. Holy shit. What do you think you can prove on from today? I'm curious. Okay, we're gonna summarize it. We're gonna summarize it, okay? <sighs> We're summarizing, okay? Okay, so here's what I could have done to improve.
calling out the moderators earlier or tell them flatly, swallow my pride and tell them flatly that I feel as though they're being inconsistent with their application uh, of moderation. Alternatively, don't have moderators at all. Alternatively, don't have moderators who I know are friends with the other person. For three, try to stay calm. If it's difficult to stay calm because you're being dogpiled on, make sure to better consolidate your points into short, quippy statements that force Sargon to answer you or whatever interlocutor I'm dealing with there. Force them to answer questions. If they don't answer questions directly, wait for them to finish talking and then repeat the question at them. Oh, no one's going to tell that Vosh slash R Vosh redirects? Oh yeah, well I can't do anything about that. That's also not my subreddit. Um, oh yeah, consolidate into short quippy statements that force them to answer. Wait, repeat questions if they don't answer. Um, light chastising is fine. Overt insulting, probably not, especially if you have moderators, especially with Sargon, whose um, popularity is literally like based on his ability to look like a smug, um, infallible cunt. Um, even when he is completely in the wrong. Um, I have to bring up more attack points. I feel like I was defending myself that entire time. I need to stay away from weird, impossible to qualify conditions like culture. Like, uh, oh, the culture is changing. Like, what was it, quantify? I can't work with this data. And I need to stick more to hard talking points. Um, if he is unwilling to engage directly with data or unwilling to acknowledge the, um, the plurality of evidence on the subject, I need to just like call off the discussion immediately. Um, if he provides me evidence, um, I, I need to immediately go over it and see if there are any inconsistencies. I need to ask him to provide evidence for every single claim he makes that doesn't sound right to me. Um, yeah. I think that's it. I think those... I think those are the main ones.